right, we're live here at the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal. And this is Annabelle Lecter. And we're joined by the writer and director of Frogman, Anthony Cousins. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm on the road to Loveland for Frogman Festival right now. So nice. I'm posting up at Target in the middle of Iowa. That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. So Frogman has some basis. I think it's really funny that we have you on Leap Day. Just saying. Yes. Oh, yeah. Very appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> leap day, leap frog, and it's all working good. So, is, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Annabelle mentioned the, fe the this festival. So, is it for your movie, or is there a, is there a Frogman uh, festival? No. Frogman's the real deal, baby. He mm -hmm. was first spotted in uh, 1955, I believe, in mm -hmm. Loveland, Ohio. Um, yeah, and uh, last year, um, one brave heroic man started the frogman festival so you know we, he was kind enough to invite us out to loveland ohio for a year too so we have a screening tomorrow night and saturday night that's sweet yeah yeah it's a built-in no. audience that's cool to I, find a uh, cryptid that's not been done a million times i'm sorry about that's okay no totally cool i'm yeah. just so excited because i saw this movie in october september for the lovecraft film festival and I freaking loved this movie. It's in my top movies of last year. <laughs> I loved it so much. It was so charming. It was like Blair Witch-ish, but with people I actually wanted to see. <laughs> they weren't just didn't piss me off entirely. No, it was great. They were they were great people. It was a great story. Like getting into, um, I don't want to give anything away, but there's you know some some things that happen and you feel bad for them and what's going on and then it builds and then it goes crazy. It just goes off the rails. And I was like, what is even happening? And uh, I loved it. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. So were, like, were you a big Frogman fan before making the movie or did you hear like, how, how did the movie like the idea for the, to make a film about Frogman come about? Well, I've always been somewhat of a, a frog aficionado, or is that what that word means? I yeah, think. Do you I like frogs. frogs? Um, yeah. Are you knowledgeable <laughs> of the frog? I don't know how knowledgeable I am, but I love I love me a good frog, especially if it's wearing a like a dinner jacket or a top hat. I'm, I'm big into <laughs> like that. The, like the like the Bunny WB one? guy, right. yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> or Toad and Frog, or Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. I don't know. I don't know. They speak to me. I don't know. But um, Frogman, I didn't hear about until 2018. Mm -hmm. um, and and when I did, I was just like, well, this is a just a, a mashup of everything I love. It's bipedal frogs. It's monsters. It's cryptids. It's magic. He's got a magic wand, which is pretty rad. And again, I don't think uh, Bigfoot or Mothman can, can claim they have a wand. So... Mm -hmm. I don't Loch know. Ness For, doesn't have a wand. Loch Ness yeah. monster. Not that we know him. So like that, I think that's pretty damn unique. And uh, yeah, I wanted to see a Frogman <laughs> movie, so so I made one. Yeah. So um, any of like the like the pictures of a Frogman and stuff in the movie is that like old stuff that you found, or was a how much of that was like made specifically specifically for the movie and stuff that was around? A couple of. You're talking about the in the like the YouTube video at the beginning. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um. So a couple of those were pre-existing, like Frogman fan art. Um. One actually, the like the the really beautiful photo of Frogman with his wand. Um. That was done by Easton Hawk, who also did our poster. Um. I actually found him through like finding that piece, and I was like, oh my god, who did this? Um. And it turns out he does a ton of cryptid art, and it's it's just awesome. And I get to meet him tomorrow in person. I'm so stoked um but yeah a lot of that art was also just like friends that i i commissioned i just asked a bunch of friends if they wanted to draw their interpretation of frogman and throw it in the movie yeah amazing did you expect frogman to go as far as it has oh <laughs> no i mean i think i think there was a time when we decided we should make this movie that we that we had hoped you know like I, don't, I can't speak for everyone else that makes movies so when i make a movie i make a movie that that feels unique to, compared to other things that i've seen because i'm i'm a huge fan and i absorb a lot of 
uh, movies and books and horror. And uh, so wanting to make a movie like this is because something like this didn't exist yet. Um, but then, you know, three and a half years later, you're kind of tired of it. And you've, you, you've been in the middle of it for so long that you almost like resent it a little bit. And, uh, you know, before the first screening in September, I was like, I don't know what we've done. This might be a huge mistake. This might be not interesting to anyone. Um, and so it, it's been it's been so reassuring and like a big relief that that people like it as much. And it kind of it kind of solidifies my belief that like you know film you, it, like it's never going to be exactly what you set out to make. It kind of takes on a life of its own while you're making it. Um, and you as the creator of it can never really enjoy it the way that like someone with fresh eyes on it can. Yeah. But like the only thing I can keep doing to, uh, to, to keep making movies is to try and make something that I would want to see as a fan, even though I'll never get to enjoy it that way, you know? So. Mm -hmm. so um, how about the idea of doing this found footage? Had you had any background in doing a found footage movie before? I hadn't. Um, I love found footage as a genre. I think it's so much fun. Um, you know, it gets a bad rap because so many people try it and, and don't make something super interesting. But the, like when it when it works, I think it really, really works. And mm -hmm. it's really unique. Um, but I had personally never tried it before. Um, and this just felt like the right project. Like cryptids and found footage just go so well together. You know, like all all the footage and photos that we see of cryptids are kind of pseudo found footage in a way, mm -hmm. you know, or at least they have the same vibe. Um, so that just felt right. But it's funny after like over a decade of doing movies, like the traditional way, this was like starting from square one, like totally new set of rules. Like, <laughs> like, uh, like everything I had learned about making movies, like did not really uh, pertain to this mm -hmm. style of filmmaking. It was very, it was, a very strange experiment. Mm -hmm. oh. Was it challenging more so uh, than when you started out uh, more traditional or did you find it like this is very liberating because the things I need are so different? It's a little bit of both like mm -hmm. like camera camera operating for instance or like cinematography like was super liberating. Mm -hmm. um, I, cause I have a cinematography background and to be able to just like, like we, we actually shot on like a high eight camera on tape. Um, so to shoot on a camera like that and not worry about getting the picture looking perfect yeah. and kind of like leaning into, you know, the, the beauty of like, you know, the, like the authenticity of just like shooting in a location or shooting outside and like letting the picture go out of focus or overexposed, like was really freeing. Um, so there was a lot of stuff like that that was super fun, but it was, I don't think I've ever experienced something as challenging in like all my years of, of trying to make film as doing found footage and trying to make it feel authentic. Like there's scenes that we shot three times over because like we'd shoot it, we'd put it in the edit and we'd go, ah, this feels staged, you know, like, this just doesn't work whereas like in narrative like traditional filmmaking like you can lean into the theatrical a little bit and even if you like like toe the line of theatrical that's okay like you can get really dramatic mm -hmm. whereas if you like you can't even flirt with that line when you're doing found footage or else it just feels you know synthetic yeah well said uh, how about editing the movie uh because i assume you have to take it from the the high eight to digital to edit it yeah, we um, so we shot, I'd say probably 60, 70 percent of the movie on actual high eight tape that we just transferred to digital. Um, and then the camera couldn't really handle like low light stuff. Like when we were out in the woods at night, it just like it looked too bad. <laughs> so we shot that stuff on a digital camera and then transferred that to a high eight tape and then transferred that ah. high eight tape back to digital. <laughs> so really get it looking authentic. We tried you know, we tried filters and we tried like digital glitches and it all just like felt really fake to me again. And it was just like, well, why not just do this like the most authentic way possible? And then there shouldn't be any problem. And it, I love the way it looks now because of that. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, you can always added- tell when there's a just a filter thrown on something because it has it's like looped. It's Definitely. like the same, you know, scratch. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. It's it irritating. <laughs> But uh, um, what was the process to actually get it from? Which was harder to get to go from uh, high eight to digital, or take digital footage and put it to high eight? Um, well, both of them you're dealing with tape, which is a kind of a unique experience because you're transferring it in real time. Mm. Uh, you can't speed up the process. <laughs> so, so that was fun. But I, I loved going from high eight to digital because for the crazy scenes where I wanted some like, you know, some glitching, some artifacting, some distortion, um, I realized I could just smack the camera while the tape was transferring to get that naturally. Um, And I I did it, you know, like three or four times over um, Mm -hmm. to like get different different effects. And, you know, like sometimes I'd hit it too hard and the image would just go nuts and like you couldn't even see what's happening. Yeah. So like, yeah. Uh, uh, well, that, even that, that idea, so that's fun. something to avoid, I think, in found footage is too much of like the shaky, where you can't, because, you know, if it's someone with a camera, they're not going to shake it to the point you can't really see anything, you know? Exactly. And like, you know, at, like, at anyone that's edited a movie, you learn like, you kind of, you kind of hit a, a level of like delusion when you when you've been editing too long you kind of like lose yourself in it um Mm -hmm. and you don't even like you gotta step away because you just don't even know what you're doing anymore and there were times where it was like oh there's not enough distortion here and then i'd go too hard and then i'd step away come back and be like oh my god i can't even tell what's going on (laughs) so it was it was definitely like a trial and error period to get Mm -hmm. to where we got uh shannon wants to know uh was that process expensive um so i i was very lucky that my friend derek bauer works at a uh like analog to digital transfer company and did it for me uh when you know when he didn't have a a paid project so i got really lucky in that respect um but there is a there's something you can buy like i just bought it off amazon it was like 25 bucks that lets you go from like you know the usual like yellow white red cables that you could plug into like a high eight camera mm-hmm. to a uh to a usb so i oh. literally had my my high eight camera plugged into my computer when i was transferring it um to digital so that i could like you know hit it and get those those glitches mm-hmm. so 25 mm-hmm. bucks yeah, not bad. <laughs> yeah, not that bad. Yeah, people want to steal your idea, but I, I, uh, so I was wondering, like, if there was any like actual just local people in the movie. And right when I was wondering that, someone popped up in the thing, and I was like, I think this is a friend of mine, Daniel Degman. So I messaged them. I was like, Did I just see you in Frogman? And he's like, Yes, you saw me in Frogman briefly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we shot, we shot in uh, Minneapolis, and um, yeah, a lot of there's a lot of fun cameos you know if you've seen things like you know john sifter's work or um the latest vhs movie there's a lot of crossover between uh the cast of frogman and the new vhs um yeah it's great by the way too I, I like the new vhs movies yeah it's fun i haven't seen it but yeah so is there any just like local people that you just like would you know who didn't even know like you know who aren't movie people that, that you got got into the Oh, sure. Um, to my knowledge, I think the only like non-actor or person that like was not aware of like what we were doing was the ice cream girl when they're kind of wandering around town and they go out for ice cream. That was a scene where I literally just put the camera in uh, Benny's hands who plays Scotty. And I was like, the three of you just wander around Main Street. Like, you just got to Loveland. You just got out of the car and you're just exploring. And, like, there's nothing story wise or plot wise to cover here. I just want you guys, you know, check, checking out town. And they decided to go get ice cream. <laughs> and that girl really had that that theory that everyone's a frog or a rat. It was just That's... like, wow, that was, that was lucky. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't seem possible. That's crazy. I know. Uh, how about creating sounds for Frogman? Like, is that something like you take like actual frog noises, or is it someone like you know making noises? Like, how does that come about? What's the process yeah. for the Frogman? Sounds? 
my my buddies uh, Ben and Spencer, who also did the sound for for my scare package segments. They did. I think they they did the sound for all of uh, scare package one and two for all the segments. Um, they did the sound. They're fantastic. Um, they really had free range, and I I said just like do whatever you want, you know, like trying to make it unnerving, spooky, but like still like kind of sound like a frog or like if a frog was this big like maybe that's what it would sound like and the funny thing is like doing research of what frogs sound like frogs are all over the place like oh yeah <laughs> like they do not just have that generic sound that you think a frog makes some of them like squeal the little uh, desert frog yeah so right sweet. yeah oh my God. <laughs> so so i did i found some references that i sent them you know and i'm like well what if we like just like made this really low or like slowed this down or like mashed this up with a tiger or whatever. But, but they pretty much just did their own thing. They, they made a lot of their own frog noises. Actually, they sent me really fun yeah. video of like running, you know, they were making weird contraptions out of like, you know, plastic Coke bottles and all sorts of stuff like that. <laughs> uh, let's see. This is a Matthew Fisher says hello. And he actually says that he burned his finger on the stovetop cooking frog legs right now. <laughs> yeah. And the uh, Frogman curse. Jeremy Atkinson wants to know where can we see Frogman? So you can see Frogman March 8th on VOD. It'll be on Apple, Amazon, and Google. Um, and we are I'm I'm setting up as many screenings as I can around the US um in you know like local art house theaters that are interested. So like we're playing Loveland, Ohio this weekend. Uh, we're playing Kansas City later this year or this this month. Um, where else are we going? Anaheim, uh, Albuquerque, Colorado Springs. If you follow me on on Instagram, cousins underscore Anthony, I'll be posting all the all the screening locations. Have anything planned to be back in the New England area? Ooh, that would be that would be awesome. There's nothing planned right now, but if you know of any theaters that you think might be interested, please let cool me know. Brattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our favorite, our favorite. Yeah, cool and Okay. Great yeah. theaters. Yeah. But uh, I, I, I'm, I think that's awesome that you're doing that. And I imagine, uh, well, I would think that's a lot of fun to go around and watch it with an audience. And also, if it's your own film, it can also be nerve wracking, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's you know I've kind of gotten used to the nerves, um, but uh, yeah, I still just get that like that anxious like feeling in your chest mm -hmm. every time you're still like, well, maybe this will be the first audience that finally hates it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think those feelings never go away. But it is like I said, you just it, it, the irony of being a filmmaker is you make movies because you love them and you make a movie that you would want to see as a fan. And then you really can never enjoy it that way because mm -hmm. it's just kind of like watching back memories that you're not in in a way. Um, yeah. It's, it's very bizarre. So it is like, it's so much fun to go to these screenings and be able to like experience it with an audience and people that don't know all the bullshit that went into the last yeah. three, three and a half years, you know, and are just seeing it with fresh eyes and are just like, that was cool. Hell yeah. You yeah. know, that honestly makes it all worth it. I, you know, uh, I think that's a great idea anyway, even just to go to all like these art, art house theaters across the country and then, uh, the theaters themselves, I'm sure, like all have their own history and they're cool. And and then you find these other weird uh, film film fans throughout the country who uh, you know all share this common bond of loving uh, you know weird independent film. Yeah, totally. We're actually we're going to San Francisco at the end of um, at the end of March um, nice. for the unnamed footage festival, which I'm I am so excited because that's I just like email from them. Yeah. It's all analog horror and found mm -hmm. footage, and the the fact that there's just like uh like a a weekend festival just celebrating that is so exciting to me because it's such yeah. a somewhat you know sh like looked down upon subgenre. Um, but you know, when you're like when you're in the middle of it, when you find the fandom of it, like they are so supportive and so excited about this stuff. Hmm. Very interesting. I love the uh, title of yeah, it. Matt wants to know. I would think it would be great to go to a film festival that it's focused on that. It must be it's so yeah. different than other festivals. Because other festivals are I love going to film festivals, but you know, you get the cadence of what it's gonna be. Yeah, I can't that, even imagine. That sounds awesome. Right. I mean, it's not like there's like 
a creature feature festival or a slasher yeah. festival or a possession festival like it's it's really cool that there's like one festival that's just like one like subgenre of the genre yeah. would you want to make more uh found footage movies or after that process you're like i think <laughs> i'm gonna go back to the traditional movie <laughs> There was there was a time where I was definitely thinking never again, <laughs> but um, no, I, I we we have an idea for a pretty well fleshed out idea for Frogman too that I would be oh, nice. very excited about doing. Um, you know, if all goes well and, and people want to see that, um, I would love to roll right into that. And then um, a couple of friends and I are putting together a found footage anthology right now. Oh, sweet! So so that's a a little project will hopefully have shot by the end of the year nice yeah and uh but you know blair witch 2 is not found footage but frogman 2 you're gonna stick into uh we'll see theme. yeah Iron, there, I, I it definitely <laughs> will it it'll, yeah it's, it's probably gonna be all found footage um but the thought has crossed my mind because i actually love blair witch 2 <laughs> Okay. Uh, i know a lot of people don't i saw it late i didn't see it until 2020 and i was like this is amazing. And, you know, I think if you saw it when it came out, it probably yeah, still just like doesn't the... work, you know, yeah. Yeah. but it's, um, it's like such a time, like such a period piece at this point. Um, uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's seeing it for the first time, like in modern day, I, I thought it was super fun. Um, yeah, I always wondered that even about the first one. Like if you watched it now and you weren't around when the first one, came, I don't know what you'd think about it. Cause so much of it, is that time period and all the like the buzz around it and it is it real, real or isn't it real and yeah, totally. yeah and that wasn't like, like a lot of time. copies of it obviously you know later yeah. on and... yeah i know a lot of people that have seen it um you know recently that never saw it when it came out and they're just like eh, you know like very <laughs> underwhelmed yeah. Yeah. and yeah. yeah i think it's just like it really has to do with that emotional connection you had with it you know yeah yeah. There is the spirit of adventure that I love with that one and with yours. There's this, you know, going out into the world and making discoveries. And as a kid, like we explored things, me and my friends, we were going in bunkers and abandoned houses because you could do that then. And yeah. just always having these ideas in your mind of what's actually out there. And uh, th there was so much fun to that. And that d these definitely bring that out, that feeling of excitement for the adventure for sure and that i mean that definitely comes from like a very real place where i mean every, everyone we made this movie with are friends you know there's mm -hmm. no one that just like that came on the crew that isn't a friend outside of film also yeah. and um you know uh, I, I mean like my co-writer john and, and nate who plays dallas like we've been doing this for over a decade together wow. and oftentimes it'd be you know four of us in an apartment doing this together so the idea mm -hmm. of like three friends getting together to like make it feel like old times like they're back in film yeah. school like you know going out and doing their thing like that's definitely it comes from a personal place for sure definitely mm -hmm. works yeah not to spoil the movie uh, the last half hour like annabelle mentioned like really gets crazy and you don't normally see this level of craziness in like a found footage movie especially if prolonged and uh that stuff's like really wild and it's great to go for the ride you know you you lead up to the uh to the ending of the movie yeah thank you yeah i mean that you know, i think it would be to no one's surprise that like willow creek and mm -hmm. like blair witch are huge influences for this movie um i love those movies so much i think you know like we talked about blair witch is like a product of its time and it did mm -hmm. what it does really well when nobody else was doing it Willow Creek, I think, works because it's dealing with Bigfoot, which, like, you can make a Bigfoot movie and not show Bigfoot. Everyone knows Bigfoot, right? I mean, we've all seen him a million times, different renditions. And it felt like if we're going to make a Frogman movie, there's not another one of those around yet. I hope I hope we're going to get more Frogman movies. <laughs> but, you know, if we're going to promise Frogman, we got to deliver, right? So mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't want to cheat people on, on the creature. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he lo everything looks great in the movie. And uh, how about the uh, the guy dressed as Frogman before we see any cryptic Neil, stuff? Uh, what are you doing? You no, know, there's a guy. He's got a Frogman suit on. He's, I've seen you know, it. A fake, a fake one. <laughs> I was just wondering if that was Bob. Spoiler or, alert! Yeah. Dang, <laughs> you don't know that, that when you start watching it. That's who you're referring to. 
that may or may not happen at some point in the movie is, uh, I think, from Amazon. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. That's pretty sweet. And uh, festival run. I'm sorry. I uh, it it played um it played a festival I was almost at, and I, I didn't get to, to go to. Was it? Uh, I forget the name of it. It was the one um, Michael and Sophia went to it. I think that's where you saw um, Smash and, and End Zone Two. Oh well, I I saw Smash and End Zone Two at Panic Fest. That's what I was. Panic which Fest, yeah. yeah, Frogman Frogman didn't play there, and I oh, think the next Panic Fest happens in april of this year so we'll already be out but that that is the theater that we will be playing um in kansas city on the 15th of march it's the screenland armor where they hold panic fest oh love that festival yeah and so um you you mentioned people can follow you to see you know what cities it's going to be at and there's also a great vhs copy of the film which is is uh i mean it's a perfect movie for a vhs copy yeah exactly that yeah that's um it's one of the few modern movies that actually maybe makes sense to watch on VHS. <laughs> we, we really did shoot on high eight. So yeah, you're not losing any quality there. <laughs> yeah. It would look cool on my, on my bookshelf. So maybe, maybe we'll, maybe I'll, I'll get one here, but it, no, yeah, it looks keep... awesome. It's a great collectible. Even if you don't have, a, I don't have a working v, uh, VCR. Yeah. Oh, get with the times, man. VHS is back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I yeah, I, I have World salvation army. I have a few of them left that I I'm bringing to to the screenings that we have, and um, I would st- uh, pay attention to lunch meat because there might be more coming soon. Oh, sweet! Yeah. yeah, and I think it's the only one they have that's green. It could be wrong, but we'll go with that. Yeah, yeah. Let's say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna let you go because I know uh, you're on the road, but I'm glad uh, you took the time to wander into a Target. Yeah. And yeah. come on the show yeah thank you guys so much there was a time where i was going to fly into loveland tomorrow so i would have been at home cozy you know <laughs> right now but uh you know thing things happen so but yeah, yeah no this was a lot of fun thank you guys yeah. for, for inviting me on yeah, yeah definitely Absolutely. it's fantastic and you're welcome well, back time. <laughs> yeah annabelle's been talking she's not just making that up she's been talking no. about it for, for a while i came out i was there and i know the people that run the festival like this is the best movie <laughs> Love it. that's awesome thank you so much castro says Absolutely. hello hey what's up shows the man yeah all right Amazing. we'll talk to you soon thank you yeah okay. take care and good luck Check in your frogman. in your festival journey thank you so much bye guys You're welcome bye, bye. bye. All right, we'll take him out of here. So, all right. So we got a little while before Naomi comes on. Dang, Neil. What? Spoiler City. Bad. We'll cut it out of the archive. Yeah, that was that was a big <laughs> one. So, yes, Cryptid Horror about the Frogman, which I did not realize when I saw it was uh was an actual cryptid out i didn't there. know that I either yeah invented. it was one of my questions so yeah so that's really cool and yeah, it's like amazing that it's out there in loveland yeah this is it's sort of like last week it's different it's because cryptid but um with the, the geechee witch and i always think yeah. like we've seen like multiple movies about uh, a lot of legend the same legends vampires mm-hmm. and i know witch has been done but not this particular one very and we've yeah, seen hopefully. lots of uh, the same cryptids, and you, you know we've seen multiple Bigfoot and stuff. So uh, even Mothman, I think it's cool. There's probably all kinds of legends, local legends or oh, legends yeah. from other countries that have never been explored on film. And we actually got uh, a super super old from uh, my grandparents. My grandfather had it. I don't even know when he got it. It's super old. It's full of New England stuff. So, oh, and also the Red Caps movie. So there are some things coming yeah, out. Yeah, it's Billy, cool when they it pop up. Great. Nice to see you, Billy. Yeah, Billy Coin's a good man. And Joe. I don't think I got, I said hi to Joe yet. I just said you're an amazing effects artist because you are. Joe so. Castro. We got two, we got two cool effects men in here. Joe Castro yeah. and Billy Coin. Very nice. Who's our new you? Facebook user? This is uh, Joe Rodriguez. Hey, Joe. Oh, I feel bad. I was going to ask about his opinion of Skinner Marink. I assume very positive. Oh, oh, uh, Anthony. Yeah. It's very 
found footage ish. Yeah. I mean, I Where guess they're not. Know. This is pretty sweet. I guess it's not technically found footage, but it's got that feel because the kids yeah. aren't recording themselves. Right. But that's that's there. So while we got some folks here, Billy and uh, Matt here, um, if any of you guys have like favorite uh, Dead of Winter moments, pop them up. Uh, let us know and we'll pop them up here on screen because uh, we were at Dead of Winter and we had a great time. We got to meet. I met Matt before, but I think it was the first time you meet Matt. I never met yeah. Billy before. It was the first time meeting Billy. Mm -hmm. It was uh, it was an uh, awesome day. festival. It was fantastic. Really For a time. one day, noon to six. Mm hmm. It was a short amount of time, and it was yeah. really jammed. It was good. We didn't even get a chance to see the vendors, which is sad, but it was, it was a busy weekend. It was yeah. fantastic. I bought a cool shirt I'll be wearing at a at a on a future show. Uh, and I looked them up there. Uh, Brain Dead Customs. Oh, and uh, I'll just say this: great website, but they don't have all all everything that they make on their website. So if you Go and seek them out mm -hmm. at a at a festival because they have a lot more mm -hmm. cool stuff. They make cool uh, uh, baseball caps with horror people on shirts, really nice pins. And uh, I was very happy to get a uh, Jack Frost shirt. I was like, whoa, <laughs> I've never seen such a thing. Hey, puppy salute. Puppy salute. <laughs> the poop bear. It's good to hear from puppy, puppy salute. I was talking to her the other night, talking about uh, MMA. Really? You just yeah. got very blurry. Yeah. Yeah. I was fading yeah. away. <laughs> so uh, our next guest, Naomi's not going to be on uh, till nine because when yeah. I was, uh, so we got we got a little while. But we do have yeah. a lot of stuff to talk about. Definitely. Well, uh, do you want to talk more about? winter yeah dead of winter it was uh i like annabelle said it was a one day let me throw this up here it was a one day uh festival it had uh tons of shorts i think this was a great way to kick it off because it was like an introduction or a best of new england uh independent horror creators mm -hmm. and i'm not exactly sure how i i know it was by invite only and I don't. I think they picked what short they they would re have represent them, and so some mm -hmm. people picked like their newest stuff. Some people picked stuff from their past, and it was uh, it was really cool because you kind you got to see a, a bunch of shorts from a, a lot of names I knew. Some people I didn't know. Some stuff yeah. I'd seen before. Some stuff I didn't. And uh, I also liked that the filmmakers were there for their shorts and stayed for the other shorts. Everyone mm -hmm. was super supportive. A uh, great community for all the stuff that we were hoping it would be. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And a huge yeah, turnout. It was really. It was. I mean, when you go to some of these new things, and it's like you don't know. But yeah, Billy, it was. It was great, and I loved. I didn't realize that it was an invite only thing, which I think was really was very smart. You you said it so well about this is like the intro to the New England horror filmmaker community. Like these are most of the people that are connect with each other. Not that there aren't other yeah. filmmakers in the community, but it's it's 12 hour, not even 12 hours, six hours with some breaks. Yeah. I invited some I won't name AP. I invited some people to come out who who didn't mm -hmm. have a short playing and they chose mm -hmm. not to, but I think even if you have a short playing, you should come out. You get to uh, um, meet other filmmakers, and that's how you know you get involved in the community. Yeah, and it wasn't filmmakers only that could no, go no, no, to no. the festival. But uh, that's yeah, another positive. Really... Yeah, Tons, yeah, because I've been to somewhere where it literally was this other filmmakers, and that's fun. But it's nice that there are people there who uh, also came just to watch movies, just there to enjoy and support. Yeah. But just so a, the place yeah, was beautiful, but, which I really think lended to the experience because it, I know that like it's it's very hard. I mean, I don't know personally just to assume how hard it is to put this stuff together, getting spaces, you know, and the place is gorgeous. And it really, I think, just bumped it up even more. Neil, I you agree. busy? 
No, just replying to Dave Deadman. He's gonna, he's going to be making his appearance here soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He should, yeah. or else he's got to keep you posted. Yes, yeah. I can't. He sent me some vo uh, voice messages, but I can't. I can't listen to them on the show. No, no. I that don't think be... he's ever been heard here on the show. So I'll, I'll keep his oh. identity secret. Yeah. Yeah. Not not that anyone would know him, but but who knows? Maybe they would. Huh? So. I was really happy to see uh, George James Frazier. He's mm -hmm. a friend. Uh, he's been doing a lot of stuff for a long time, and I'd never seen his first short before. Which is what he named his own festival after. Happenstance. Yes. Yeah. And um, I thought it was fantastic. It, yeah, I thought right. it was great at first. It's, it's a creepy dude who's, like, stalking people on the road. And you find... I, I'm. I don't think this is a big shock because it's a it's a dude on the road, right? So he's capturing people and holding them hostage in his basement. There's more detail to that, but he's he's clearly a horrible man. And then it goes in a different direction. He meets another woman out on the road, and that gets really dark. And then it takes a twist where the woman like ends up kind of being the victor in the scenario. And then the, the story just keeps going into these weird, unexpected directions. Which at like first a twist I thought, a twist. yeah. At first, I didn't like the twist. I was like, ah, it was great. And then you kind of went in this direction that's sort of comedic. I didn't really find it comedic up to that point, like in a good way. But uh, but then I bought into it. And I was like, all right, now this is all coming together. And I and I thought it really worked. It was a uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and I, I like the story behind the backstory of him making it. He just woke up one day and he told his uh, wife, like, I, I'm going to make a movie. And, she, mm -hmm. and instead of saying, no, do that, you're stupid. She was supportive. <laughs> and uh, and then he's been making stuff ever since. It was uh, yeah. motivational because um, I would like to start making stuff here without your head mm -hmm. film, like short films. So, you know, why Let's not? See. Oh, I've got a bunch of notes. Infinite Santa 8000. Yeah, is that a looks great. Non-stop crazy sci-fi. Everything has cybernetics. Like, everything has cybernetics. It's an animated thing. And it looks so freaking awesome. I don't know if we'll have time. I'm going to see if I can get... Uh, what is it? I love the name Infinite Santa 5... It was 8000? I'm not sure. But it was a great, uh, it was a great uh, trailer, definitely. It's very the the animation. It looks. Someone had a lot of fun doing this. This it is crazy. There's weird villains in it. There's crazy reindeer. It's just, it's nuts. Um, consumed was awesome. Do you remember that one? It was the it, they're in order. It was the chef who was in a restaurant and uh, there's nice music and it's a beautiful restaurant. And this guy is preparing this meal. It looks like a nice French small things and beautiful uh, like glazes and all of this. And, you know, then I don't, I don't think it's a big spoiler. You find out that he's cooking. Uh, there's a woman who's still alive and he's, he's cooking parts of her. And it was just great. It's just the delivery. Let me see. Where is special treatment at? Special treatment. I have to go on order, man. I don't have a good memory. That's why I have That's to write all fine. these notes. I actually wondered if um, if people thought I was just texting. And then I felt bad. Oh, like, I see. Instead of taking just, notes. Right, right, right. text right. during the movie. Right. Zzz, but I was just taking notes. So Yeah, yeah. I felt really bad. I hope no one thought I was just being. I told everyone she's insane. totally texting. Shh. Priest Hunter uh, um, by Skip Shea. I'd seen it before, but I'd only seen it through the internet. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, so this Priest Hunter, um, Skip Shea, he says it out. He's right out front about it, that he mm -hmm. he was abused by people in the church when he was a kid. And so this movie is addresses that where he um goes into that subject matter and kind of like a a I don't know if vengeance is the right word but you get my drift and there's a character that's tasked to go into the world avenging children and it was 
much more powerful on the big screen. Not that it wasn't. I mean, the subject matter itself, but uh, but it was great. I loved it. Um, let's see. Oh, it's Mima. That was the one where it is. So it's a nice neighborhood, and there's this older woman who lives in her nice home, and there's a knock on the door or a bell ring or whatever. And it's this adult guy outside who's like, it's Mima. And she doesn't recognize him. And so he, he's he got to convince her of, no, you know, I'm your son. And this always happens. And then it goes so dark. Yeah. I don't really know if I should. I mean, they're, tr they're, they're festival yeah, that's things. It. So, like, I don't know if people are going to see them. That's so I don't, I don't know, know if, if it's out there. It. For, yeah, that's very, that's, that's, uh, yeah, right. Because it's like. You, you don't want to spoil it for people who are going to see it, but also can they, you know, is there a platform besides yeah. seeing it at a festival? Yeah. So what's the vote? What do you think? Um, I say no spoil it, but uh, no it definitely. Spoil. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it. it's Mima is super dark and it's not, it's Mima like the Southern grandma. It's me. Ma. Comma. Yeah. Yeah. Um, writer's block was good mm -hmm. um this was a guy was clearly a captive of some sort he was like this big burly dude he had long street he was a mess he was dirty he was grubby he was chained to like a, a seat and a table and there was a typewriter in front of him and it was there's something else that was great about this is before every short uh, they had they invited the filmmaker to the stage to kind of yeah like, instead of after uh, usually it, I think anything I've ever been to it's always uh, after the film yeah. but I thought it was interesting to do it before it gets uh, it gives people idea of what they're going to see and the backstory of you know making it yeah it was I thought it was a really good idea and so it wasn't like an answer and question time it was just no. hey. It was like an introduction, like a, a minute of of whatever you want to say to introduce the the film. Yeah, so and that was really introduce nice. Introduce yourself too, like, hey, this yeah. is this is so and so, and this is what they made, and and yeah. stuff that they, you know, you can check out the other stuff. So the writer's block one, this guy was stuck in this environment. It's very hellish. It looks hot. It just looks awful, and he's writing, 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 and. Still, I don't know how much to give away, but the, it's the very stylized, not necessarily like a straightforward story, but it was uh and a uh, visually fantastic, edited very yeah. well. And it was I, I noticed that it was very it stirred my senses. It was the visuals, and then there were things that you just have clear associations with smells with taste, with textures, like the idea of it, it looks like it feels hot. And I really think that, that this guy did such a good job of really using sensory things to put you in that space. Um, but the guy is trying to write and he's not doing so great. And the, uh, the analogy was, I believe, is that uh, people sometimes think they have to suffer for their art. And a lot of people will say, you know, without without some kind of suffering, without some kind of unhealthy influence, then some people feel like they're they're not able to make art. Um, and the writer's block, I think, went with that. It, it was really, really good. Let's see. Cup of tea. I remember that one. I can't remember what that was about at the head, top of my head. Cup of tea. Here are my cliff notes. Daughter comes home with blood on uh, on her in the middle of the night. Says pisses out, but supposed to be passes out in the morning. So it's just, you see this girl. She's in the woods. She's got like blood on her. She ends up coming home to her mom's house in the middle of the night. Mom wakes up and is like, oh my God. Girl passes out. Next day girl comes to mom is like what happened i searched your body there we go infinite santa that doesn't barely scratches the surface of that how makes you want to see it it's insane mm -hmm. the trailer was so great i wonder if you could let me see if you could find the trailer out there yes you can you can totally look up infinite santa 8000 and see the trailer um so yeah, uh, so it goes down this road of 
of what happened with the daughter. Where did she go? What's the story there? And that takes a, a twist, like a personality twist. And then it takes another twist at the end, which I thought was great. But I can't share it with you all. Mm -hmm. There's lots of twists. And they were, they were good twists. And the final twist, something I did not like, and I mentioned this to Neil, is the use of psychiatric medication as a foil for people being crazy and implying like, oh, I take my meds or they didn't take their meds or whatever it is. And like that idea, I don't think that's helpful at all because there's already, as a person who's a servant in the mental health field, and it's, it's very unhelpful to make an association between like meds are bad or meds change you in negative ways. Or if someone doesn't take their meds, then they're going to kill people or what, you know, it's, I'm just not a fan. It's not, not something I would ever do. Um, it's unnecessary in storytelling to put that in there. So I think it's super lazy and sorry, the, I have criticisms about it. I do not feel good about that at all. Maybe some people have had very negative experiences of medications and that's their artistic way of putting that on display. I don't like it. Um, all right. Special treatment is so old. <laughs> Special treatment was Alexander Hawk and it's like got corded phones. I was like, damn, how old is this? <laughs> how long ago because even i was thinking back in my own history it's not a well, criticism because the movie's old it you know if that's well, i think, all you got they, I think actually they back. said they made it during covid no way i Who's thought got... that's what i thought that's what alexander said no way really Maybe Billy knows. Billy out in the audience. When was yeah, special? Matthew Fisher's made? here too, who is uh, who uh, directed it. Oh, special treatment. I guess when you Google special treatment, that's not where you're gonna get. A few years ago, dude, where'd you get these corded phones? Maybe there were other phones in it, but once I saw a corded phone, I was just like, that movie was silly. It did use meds though, and I'm not into that. They were, I would say that to anybody, and it could be it could be Neil, it could be a best friend. And I would be like, not cool. So, but it was very, very silly. Alexander has such a like such a presence and personality. Um, it was really. I was silly. hoping they would keep up with the music every time he walked. I, I really liked the beginning when they played the clown music every time, and he was doing the, he was kind of doing the clown mm -hmm. walk. He had the moves. He did. He had the moves. So yeah, it was fun. It was entertaining. Mm -hmm. I'm a big and fan of Ale Alexander. As you know, as people know, I named a uh, an award after him because okay. our first severed limbs. I think there was four or five shorts with Alexander in them, and uh, so I and so we named yeah. the award after a most great. beloved character, and he won the That's first. Right. One, which uh, would have been bad if you wouldn't have won, I guess. I must have been very occupied during Rats because I only wrote something about. It's a movie that has meds in it again. Maybe I was just like uh Rick Chandler. Remember? Rick Chandler. Oh, short. This is like, uh, yeah, it's got sorry. a lot of people I know in it. It was kind of uh, like a mafia. Yeah. Because movie. originally he was gonna make a series, uh Ruby, which was gonna be like his yeah. uh mob series. And then uh he explained things fell through for various reasons, and so he ended up making a, a short film uh rap. Yeah. It was great acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot and of uh, folks. Uh, I'm a big fan of Lizzie Havoc. I think she's yeah, really good. she's very standout. She's great. She's great. Um, let's see. Then the block two, the evil unleashed. This was fantastic. My my buddies. Uh, uh, we got Walter, we got Gary. I forget the name of their company, but I love their stuff. They make Plaga, Plague of Zombies, which made it, which was yeah, cool. It was actually, there was a Plague of Zombie Blu-ray on the table at one point. Mm -hmm. Super fun, really well made. And uh, they put it all together like at last minute, which was uh, doubly. Yeah, was, yeah, this was great. Really fun. 
clever, great monster, cool, mm. like background. It was a very different monster. Mm -hmm. Like, because there is like cool little story stuff to it about how this monster exists and what you do. And then there is humor through the whole thing, um, which I think worked. Um, great acting. Sad. What happens with uh, the person whose house they, they invade. Mm -hmm. It was good. And then the ending was like... The worst guy gets his due. I can't say there's really any innocent <laughs> right, right. main characters. The great production but, value on this. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Definitely. Um, and the music was awesome. Yeah. Who's yeah, yeah. Music? You, uh, Walter, you knew Walter told me beforehand that his friend in um, Argentina, I believe, uh, did the did so the music. Good. That was awesome. And then Happenstance, which I already went over. Mm -hmm. Great short. Oh, my God. Mrs. Holloway. Huge fan. This was so fun. So just so, so great. It was one of my tippity top. I agree. Totally one of my tippity top ones. So it's uh this pleasant neighborhood where it's the stereotype like neighborly neighbors and there's an older woman and she's in her kitchen baking and then a neighborly neighbor woman comes over and wants to ask for what I cinnamon and they're talking about oh the neighborhood baking contest and yours is going to be great and yours is going to be great and remember when the other woman won and they and there's like this hate boiling up inside of the woman who is lending the cinnamon. And it's just so funny the way they make her like competitive just to her facial, everybody's facial expressions and this very over the top animated style to everybody's behaviors. The guy who was the, the pie contest judge. Yeah, he's awesome. So over the top. Mm -hmm. um but it all worked because it was very it was very 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 comic cartoon like yeah. Yeah. and uh man just it was fantastic and then that had an amazing twist too like it was enough to have all the the madness and uh strategies and violence and quirky funny stuff but then the end it's like oh my god yes so that's about uh, that was part of Severed Limbs thir the 13th, which I was very excited about. Um, but yeah, this was great. Uh, the director was super passionate about a, about a project oh, yeah. that um, he wants everyone to check out. It's like a TV. Oh, it's a series that was made and then like taken down by Amazon, I believe. And Mrs. Halloway yeah. herself was there in attendance. She, she was, was super wonderful. cool. Yeah. Meat pie. I actually didn't even know that was. Uh, I didn't know he was a New England filmmaker when we showed it at, at, yeah. uh, at Seven Limbs. So that's very cool. Then Step Right Up was nuts. The there are two guys that introduced it, um, and they were kind of like, we don't even know if this is a horror movie. Well, one of them was like, it's not really a horror movie. And the other guy, like, it's about the horrors of the world and being a human. All right. But he said it himself. He was trying to like beef it up. Mm -hmm. And he said it was like, it's been told, it's been sad that it's a combination of falling down uh, with Kurt Douglas and another movie that I don't recall. It is not just remind people, it is like direct parody of falling down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like step by step as this character goes on his journey in his white collared shirt and uh, tie. And it's very silly. The premise is this guy, um, he just wants his coffee. And the coffee pot breaks. Which I can relate like, to. Yeah. And he's just mad, rageful. And then there's, uh, so there's this commercial on TV. Ridiculous. It's a very old style, like, I'd say 80s, 90s style, where it's this very big person like come on down and get your coffee pot and he's like violent and crazy he's got a giant beyond 10 gallon hat like a giant foam hat right and it was just silly so then this man with the coffee pot needs is on a quest to go get his coffee pot and it just plays out like 
step by step like falling down but i love falling down so to me this parody i consider it a parody it was good um there's characters like at one point he's in a diner and he talked and his father was there his father was excellent it was it was weird it was long it probably could have been a little bit shorter mm -hmm. but i found it to be very fun now, connor the morley ending. by the way is the director of mrs holloway he just uh, he's just watching now i guess um hello here i felt like it got better as it went along it like progressed because at first i didn't really i wasn't into it i wasn't getting it who's over there saying hello uh this is alcario carrie cardina so hello that's a cool name it is a very cool name hello then uh, this was i must have i don't know i don't know if this is what oh this might have been when i stood up to stretch at the back jessica kind of skinnamarinky Mm, yeah, That's this is uh, by Jeremy Aruda. Um, he, uh, a good friend, Jeremy Aruda. It makes uh, yeah. great stuff. He does a lot of stuff for it. King from the 508 does some weird animated stuff on his own. So, do you yeah, have a this, recollection? I do. I think this is when I was starting to get like crampy body stretch stretch yeah, out time. Uh, it was very much like skin and rink but to me it worked better than skin and rink uh but yeah it's about you know like a kid and it's kind of through the eye like uh like skin and rink through the eyes of a kid mm -hmm. the horror short through the eyes of the of a child a uh, great ending and uh i don't want to spoil anything i believe that is out there somewhere so uh uh, seek it out. Seek anything out, That's but tough. Jeremy Aruda. Jessica. Jessica is not an easy name to find for short. I'm sure. True. Yeah. Look up you Jeremy Aruda. For short. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And how would you spell Aruda for people to find? Because that's not A R R U D A. There we go. Walter. Hello, Walter. Hey, Walter. Nice to have you. I think we yeah. were just talking. Yeah, we just very over kindly your about your film. And we want Not to know who kindly, did the music. Kindly is kind of like being nice, even if you don't have to be nice. The movie was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, we loved it. And uh, we want to know who did the music. I know it was a friend of yours from Argentina, but I wasn't sure the name. I think that might have been one of my longest sets of notes. To the newts! Oh, there's a part where someone gets their heart punched out. I won't say who does it, but I was just like, mm. holy shit! <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. It was great. It was great. Mm -hmm. um, Pablo Fu. What's that? All right. Pablo Fu. Pablo Fu. It was so good. Yeah, we'll have to check his stuff out. Maybe uh, we can play some of it on the show or something if you'd be into it. Yeah, that would be amazing. We got Killing with Kindness. It wasn't very long. Uh, villain chases. This is it. It says, Very silly villain chases woman oh, to picnic yeah. table. There are decorations there. She gets killed anyways. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a giant spoiler. It's yeah, I don't know if that was that was that the he premiere made, of it or I'm not sure. Wait, he made the music for When Evil Lurks. Get out. No way. Awesome. awesome. When Evil Lurks is one of our favorite it was our favorite movie of last year. One of my favorite yeah. horror movies. And Plague of yeah. Zombie, I've been talking mm -hmm. about. Um huge fan of uh mm -hmm. Anvil needs to see it. I know. I'm a big fan of both films. Where do I see that movie? Because I do. I have to put it on a definite to watch list, not just a like off to the side, maybe. Someday. Yeah, I know the Blu rays out. Walter, is Plague of Zombies on? Uh, is it streaming on any websites? Let us know. And uh, for everyone, because I, I, not just because I like Walter and Gary and everyone involved. Uh, Tubi, sweet. Oh, sweet. It's on Tubi. Nice. Which Amber Moses didn't make it there. What what was she oh, doing? Oh, Amazon. It's putting out the all the list. Hey, David Deadman. David Deadman oh, shoot. is um. Naomi is supposed to be on on the hour. Hopefully, she's next not hour. Going. The next hour. Oh, okay. So we have plans. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. David Deadman. Right, we'll think. We'll think of some more later. So. I feel bad because i do i'm bad with names nice thanks dave i hope you get a good score on your test yeah i don't know or, what or yeah or is it like a, for? or was it like a drug test or something well it could be yeah he just peed as hard as possible <laughs> thanks dave 
I want to know what this test is. Congratulations. Good luck. All the you things. Know, there's a, that your test, it, baby. I, in my mind, I start thinking of this story I've heard on, on my wrestling show several times. When people talk about the Iron Sheik, the Iron Sheik was brought in and and they told them, you know, we got the we got the results back of your drug tests and they were positive. Oh, very good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, Sheik, this is not good. They had to fire him. But yeah. <laughs> oh, poor old man. Yeah. R.I.P. Iron Sheik. Uh, sweet dreams. I started talking about how I feel bad because I'm terrible with names. The woman host. Can we find her name? I feel awful. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the two this, hosts, this was the premiere of it. Yes. PJ, I know because he's all over the Facebooks. She is not. I her name's there. Ashes, isn't it? Is it? Oh, that was right. It was a really cool. It was a cool name. PJ Rahal. Rahal. Yes. PJ Ashes. Ramon Rahal. Yes. Thank you, Billy. So Ashes. So her uh, film is called Sweet Dreams. It's very cute. It's the two of them. They're in bed. Husband. Uh, oh, but I feel bad for him because he's like a snorer and is driving her crazy. But then he tells this really cute story about Andre the Giant that I thought was really funny. It was like being on I a agree. plane. I right? agree. Yeah, yeah. I like that story. What's mm -hmm. the story, Neil? Do you remember it? Um, so I, I, well, it's a few things. Andre like took such massive, well, he, not, he was a massive man. So it, the, in the store, they said yeah, he couldn't use a toilet, but it's actually he couldn't use a toilet in when he would go to Japan is the actual story mm. because the toilets are much smaller. So you'd have to sit in the bathtub to take a dump. And then there was a long story about being on a plane and he was way too, I can understand. I mean, when I was heavier, I could barely fit in the in the bathrooms, and I wasn't, you know, seven feet tall. And uh, they are very small in the, in the on the plane, so they had to make like a makeshift toilet for him in the back, like behind curtains. And yeah, um, in the in the area for the staff. Yeah, and uh, I've heard you know multiple different takes on that, and uh, you know this is sort of funny, but if you think about the you know the implication, it isn't. But he used to um, take, he would drink massively on the plane. So he would just be like passed out. And it was because he was very uncomfortable. You know? Aw, poor guy. Yeah. So the PGA character in the, in the movie tells her the story and she is not interested. <laughs> and she's kind of like, I don't want to enter. You can tell in her mind, she's like, I do not want to hear this garbage. Mm -hmm. I just want to go to sleep. Leave me alone. So, uh, uh, that was basically the yeah, plot. Yeah, we don't want to spoil the story. You know, you got the big end. Uh, I'll say it. You know, a revenge on the storing. Yeah, Can great effect. Like that? Yeah. Because that's pretty open to how yeah, that goes. Yeah, great. Great effects. Great effects. Yes. Uh, let's see. Oh, this was yeah, Hitchhiker Killer. Oh, that that was um, not the box. It was the one last kill. That's it. I I must. The have next, the proposed. next two were they were um they were it came from five oh eight. The, their two original films, uh, the box and um, one last kill, and it was like the the special director's edition of each, and it was the last time they will ever play them. Ever. So what was Hitchhiker Killer? That was uh, one last kill. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which was that really was... special. And James did a great job of like hype. He's a good hype man. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, he really hyped up that this is the last time ever. And he was great. So this guy, another dude on the road who's a nasty bastard out there grabbing very women charismatic the, the actor and has a great voice uh, the the, the, the other the, yeah, yeah 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 so there's a demon ghost possessor creep man who's in the backseat always telling this guy like you gotta kill you do this it's gonna be and then um it's like the dark passenger yeah yeah so this guy who's the driver is kind of just rolling with it until he meets a girl who he actually likes. And uh, yeah, and he doesn't want to do it anymore. 
So I didn't go. There was something I thought would happen that didn't. But um, oh, but then it goes like it was really cool. I thought it was really cool, like uh, kind of like fate like ending where people's lives intersect in an interesting way. Um, it was good. And then yeah. the box, I don't, I didn't write any notes. That was, I don't know when I, what happened with me for the other movie, but this one I was standing up. It was like the end. I was standing up, stretching out my poor crushed legs. And, uh, the yeah, box is great. Box away. is great. That was, uh, I believe that was one of the, in our first, uh, Severed Limbs was what one of our, our big uh, shorts. I saw it in Severed Limbs. Yeah, it was so. either the first or the second one. Um, so, yeah, this one's great. Very well acted. Great story. It looks great. Um, both these films are short films, but, you know, they're like longer short films. They're not quite a feature, but they're, you know, longer than most shorts. So, like, probably over 20, a little over 20 minutes, I think. Mm -hmm. And then you could buy both of them together on, on a Blu-ray or DVD. So you can still see them, but you have to buy the DVD. They're not going to screen them again. But yeah, uh, and um, so they have a big, you know, big crate of some kind. And the mystery is, you know, what's inside of it. They can't get rid of it. And uh, I, I don't want to give too much away, but it's a, it's a great short. You guys should check it out. Go check out. It came from the 508. And uh, get yourself a copy. Yeah. So and again, the, already... uh, this, the guy's back. Uh, the guy who played the demon in the other one. Yes. I don't know your name. I'm sorry, but uh, I'm a big fan. I love the voice, and he's very. Uh, he's got a lot of charisma and presence. And Neil wants to be kind like of a him scary dude. Up. Yeah, I like this guy. Dan, that's it. Walter says it's Dan. nice. You guys are great. Thank you, Walter. Am I? Is that? Do you pronounce it Walter or Walter? I guess Walter is more of a German pronunciation. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. So it was a great time. I really wish we got to see. Um, I really didn't see any. Uh, we saw him real quick when we first got there, and then I saw a few. There. Oh, I don't have it down here. There was a guy selling uh, this board game. Uf. It was a UFO board oh, game. That's right. And it looked like an old school board game that I would have played in the eighties. So it had like the cardboard box, and it was long, like like the games back then. And the guy told me the backstory of it, which I thought was great, was there he, a guy in the 80s uh, claims he was abducted by aliens, and he made this board game based on his experience. And then he never did anything with it. In 1989, he made it. And then they met this man at a UFO convention, UFO festival, and he told them the story, and they commissioned the game from him. So now it's actually out, and you can buy it for the first time. And I regret not uh, at least seeing how much it was. But uh, I will say this for vendors. I would put prices on everything instead of always mm -hmm. up to the people to ask how much stuff is. Because mm -hmm. sometimes that I don't ask then because I'm thinking I'm going to ask how much this is. And if I don't buy it, I feel like I'm being like a cheapo or something. <laughs> so just put the price there. And, mm -hmm. you know, someone might, it, otherwise you're forced people to ask. And then sometimes they feel a little like awkward, like myself. And you know what? If you're willing to haggle, right. put that on the side. Right, right, right. <laughs> Prices are negotiable. Yeah. Try your best you to somebody look in, you might say, hey, you know, you like that? Uh, it's 30, we'll get 25. Or, hey, you want this and this? We can give it to you together or something like that. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I'm a big fan of two for deals, something like that, you know. Two not buy one, one get one free but like hey this is these shirts are 30 but you know if you want two of them two different ones you can get them for 50 you know what I'm saying? yeah yeah i like a deal is what i'm saying people do like deals like yeah. a lot of times people do that with pins and stuff like like small things yeah sometimes with posters too but at any rate um next year next year they yeah, also had an cool. amazing uh, Ouija board, very similar uh, to the one you got. Like it was like my Ouija big. board, except it was yeah. like enormous. Where is my Ouija board? Deals are great. Off. See, Walter knows. Walter knows what I'm saying. Yeah, deals are great. Yeah. 
So, by the way, if you're wherever you're watching this, I'm happy. We're actually streaming on Twitter tonight as well. Twitter, oh. Facebook, uh, Twitch, YouTube, wherever it is. Please go and give it a like on YouTube and like us and uh, subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitch. We're eight away from 5,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube. So. Whoa. There's eight of you out there that haven't subscribed. I have a, like a million subscriptions and I never see any emails or updates. So if you yeah, subscribe, you're just changed. being kind because you also we have to hit know. that bell icon. <laughs> you hit that little yeah, bell icon, you supposedly you'll get some you'll get notifications. <laughs> so I kind Not of the internet that. icon, but the bell icon. Yeah, I thought other. Jackie Jones was the internet icon, yeah, not Nasty right. Neil. That's always my saying on in your head. What's Who's Nasty Neil? Icon? Not the internet icon. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, sometimes there's a little crossover. Uh, mm -hmm. What's up? Oh, man. Taz, the resident artist. I know her. Great. She's a great artist. I think the cool. first time she's watching the show, as far as I know. Nice. Hello, Taz. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Hit the, hit the like thing. So good timing for you because we just like ran out of that part of the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't true. know. It was a wonderful time. You know, yeah. uh, everybody was great. Uh, the it dead of winter. Perfect. It's like they've been doing it for a bajillion years. But the thing is, is that a lot of those people have been going to these for most of their adult lives and probably some of them before their adult lives started. Um, yeah. So. They knew what they want to deliver, and they made it happen. More yeah. food next year. More food. We're always More good. Food. Yeah, I actually, I actually made this uh, suggestion to James. I will say, I, I felt, but he was like, "I'm right with you." He also thought that there would be more stuff right in the area uh, that was open. But anyway. It'll be something for next year to have more uh, food vendors in there. Gary also thought the same. Yeah, see, I see people wanting the food out there. And it's hard to find food there. Neil and I went, like, on a quest for coffee drinks. And it was a long quest. It took us out and about the city because some of these places were, like, there's coffee here, but there wasn't. Or it was closed. But we found it. Then we were late. So, yeah, food. Yes, Walter agrees. We got the we bring in the food. Yeah. So let's see. I got some. So we're gonna have Naomi Grossman on in about forty minutes from American Horror Story. She plays Pepper, and we're gonna be talking about her one woman show, American Horror Story, which is horror. much different than horror. Yeah, horror. Right. Whoa. W. I thought you were just calling me that. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, is going Neil, on the big horror. But yeah, American Horror Story. Horror. And it's weird because I have a. I've. I think people thought I've said that before when we're at actual conventions. I'll be like, we're going now to a horror, horror convention. They're like, whoa, wait a minute, buddy. Get the hell out of my cab. But they, uh, I was like, no, horror. And then they were still like, yeah, no, get the hell out of here. But no. Yeah, so yeah. But anyway, American, and it's very clever. I'm curious if anyone from American Horror Story has been to American Horror Story. Perhaps. We heard we about this from our friend. And um thank oh, you, Robert. Sweet. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, yeah, coming to Boston. We already got tickets. We are planning on being there and I recommend this is a one woman show. It's really exciting. She's a cool person. She's been in a bunch of nifty stuff. Uh what was so it's the playing one twice one? in Boston next Thursday, week from today. So if you're really? not here watching the show, you can go there. And then the show? I don't know if I put it in my calendar. It's next Saturday. Next Saturday. That's where All we right. get we know. have uh tickets. Anvil and I have tickets for next Saturday. Uh the oh, night. I see what happened. March 9th. March 9th. Mm -hmm. Is that next Saturday? Oh, I guess it is. All right, my calendar's all yeah. Bostonians just pronounce horror differently. That's probably true. How do other people pronounce horror? Horror? The horror. Horror. Robert Richards, it's a great show. Is it at the LA show? Oh, sweet. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah, I've heard good things. Uh, yeah. Al Alok has been uh, really putting it over. Yeah. Alok, Alok takes care of people. 
I don't she know. was in uh, One BR, which was really fun. Anybody who hasn't seen the one movie One BR, find it. It's out there. I think I saw it on Tubi. It's, it's out and about in the uh, streaming lands. Right, better put this in here. So the um, what are you gonna say? I don't know if you even saw this, but earlier today, mm -hmm. before the show, I'd set up for the fiftieth anniversary of the film. This year is the 50th anniversary of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, a 1974 yes. classic. Uh, March 28th, the end of March, live here on the show, we will have Alan Danziger on the show, who That's plays so Jerry. Excellent. Never That's been so on the show I before. And he happens to actually, uh, he's got his own movie coming out. Oh, nice. The What's he up to? The Weed Hacker Massacre. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so we're going to talk <laughs> about uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Legacy, Weed Hacker. It's going to be a good time. Weed Hacker Massacre. I need to see things. It's got a Facebook page. The Weed Hacker. Not the Weed Whacker Massacre, no, which no, is from 2017. The, weed, the weed, Hacker weed Hacker Massacre. You can right. find out about it at weedhackermovie.com. There also appears to be a, a preview trailer from four months ago. Yeah. Oh, my God. Boom. The Weed Hacker Massacre. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty sweet. Oh, my goodness. Cool. Very cool. Very exciting. Yeah, hey, Pepe, time. what is up? Nice to have you. Pepe Potit. Pepe's a good man. Definitely. So that's really exciting. Uh, that's great, Neil. Forget. Did you seek him out, or did he? I saw. I, you out I, out uh, I had asked him years ago. Yes. And it didn't come about for whatever reason, and so I was like, "Huh." So I reached out to him earlier today, and he got right back, and he was all about doing it. So. Amazing. At what are you all doing? The... Pepe's digging trenches. Dave Deadman's taking tests. We got. We've got a diverse crowd of yeah. interesting. Are you burying things. bodies or what's going on right? here? A thousand foot. What, are you like digging it by hand or by like hand? Do you get what this is? Neil, do you understand that? Like a shovel? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to be sure. It's, I don't know what else it would be. Honestly, right. I don't know if you could get anything like. Oh, I guess you could. Yeah. A very slow, uncomfortable experience. Just saying. So there's a bunch of things here. So I'm gonna yeah. oh so my friend Eric Yoder. Yeah. He posted this earlier, and I was like, Good mm. lord, this is awesome. So this here is the condition of the original uh animatronic what? mask. Oh my god, from Big Trouble in Little China. <gasps> Stop. Oh my god, yes. Now I see it on the big giant monster. Yeah, he Holy restored crap. it. Eric Yoda restored it. Oh my god. Yeah. And this is what it looks like now. Holy Damn. shit. Wow. He did an amazing job. Wow. That's awesome. That mm -hmm. movie. One of my always been one of my favorites. It's very it's a weird movie because it doesn't fit into one genre. It's multiple genres, uh -huh. which I think is a problem for some people. But I, um, over the years, I think uh, it's definitely found it's a, a lot yeah. of the Carpenter movies. Not a lot. I'm like the, the Halloween always had an audience, but like the thing, like it was not liked at the time. And these are Halloween three. Trouble in Little China. Yeah. Halloween three. I like the fog. I don't know if that went well at the time or didn't, but. It's a nice, it's a nice like put on and just leave it be, let it run kind of movie. This is oh, but uh, Prince of Darkness, I freaking love. I don't know how that did originally. Yo, Dustin, Dustin's Stop. a good man. Uh, Billy Coin, gorgeous. Yeah, it's an amazing restoration. That's great. Now, I'm gonna be a nerd. Mm hmm. I got something in the mail that has to do with junk. I was gonna wait until later so I could be a nerd after in the in the without your head after hours. A friend of mine, an artist friend, posted on his timeline that he got this literally thing 
that he ordered. Now, I don't give... I respect people when they have figures. They're they're cool and great. I don't really care. I'm not a collector. I don't I don't collect. I just don't. Um, but I saw this, and I had to have it. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it on the show last week. So, so it came the other. I haven't even done anything with it yet because I want to be able to sit and enjoy it. I don't want to be interrupted. I'm going to play soundtrack music. Oh, damn. All right. That looks awesome. Is that the toy? Yeah, it's look. Holy shit. Look at that. Look at that. It's crazy. So let me let me show you. So I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Like I hope you all I meant to put Enjoy her as my, the big one. What's going on here? About this, this thing. Let me get this. All right. So slide it out here. I'm going to damage it. I need to make sure it's all pristine for when I finally dig into it. Because you have to put it together. I was warned that putting the tentacles on is a real pain in the ass. So the first layer is tentacles. Oh, wow. Many tentacles. They're gross, obviously. Very cool. The second layer is also, I was like, oh, I didn't even know if I wanted to touch it because it's like a spider. Boris, the spider. Oh, wow. You can nice. see all the things. But then. Yeah, all the, yeah, you can see the little hairs on the. Uh, but, on the um, yeah, we'll wait for this because this is way gross. See oh man, you? yeah, you can see all the little uh, <laughs> longer hairs. It's yeah. fucking disgusting. <laughs> it's so gross. I don't even want to touch it. And then we've got the final. Now see this dog here? They give you the dog dog, and then you can have all these like different things so it'll like be like <laughs> it's so amazing that's oh, rocking yeah i'm very excited i am there's like a little skull and this big ass weird crazy hand i don't know i think his mouth opens maybe oh my god we will see you tat <laughs> trying to drive you away with my foolish boy no, but yeah so so I'm very excited. All right, yeah. that was my. I know Taz from another show that I listened to. So that's cool. Really? Yeah. How come? How come I'm not here? What's happening? Uh, because I think you. There we go. Leave me up to show off my uh. This. All right. Thanks. Really I awesome appreciate y'all <laughs> for for seeing me geek out about this. <laughs> that's great i have a little i have something here i put up here but it's not nearly as creepy but i am very happy with it and that is oh that is the emotional support pickle i will always be around to let you know that you are a big deal yeah that was one of neil's birthday presents mm -hmm. for me it's got a little stand and everything yeah he's sitting up here yeah because Neil is a big deal. I don't say it to him all the time because he has enough problems with his ego. What? But once in a while, if Neil's a little bit like down in the dumps, yeah, I can just look his at ass pickle. and say, everybody loves you, Neil. Stop it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, Taz yeah. loves it. Thanks, guys. It's crazy expensive, but you can find it. If you peek around, you can find it not crazy expensive. So some people might be open to spending $70 on it. I was not because I'm a frugal New Englander and I don't like to spend like an, I'm like an old, old, old person, extra old, older than me. I was already this old when I was young. You hear me? I understand. I understand. <laughs> Perpetually old. 
perpetually old. I'm a yeah. blend of super an old soul, old and incredi- an, old soul, an incredibly soul. immature, super old person. Right. <laughs> well, uh, we've changed. I wanted to uh, for our friends over in England. Yes. This is pretty rocking. What is this? Fifty years Whoa. of classic British horror. Fiftieth anniversary. Uh, kind of believe it's coming up in July. Nice. They're showing Frankenstein Ooh. and the Monster from Hell. Oh my God! Eridolia, which I'm not sure what that is, and Madhouse with Vincent Price. Mm-hmm. Lots of cool people are going to be there. Former guest oh, Graham Humphreys will be there. Yeah, I see him. He's such a brilliant artist, just amazing. And someone I'd love to get on the show. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get her on. Caroline Monroe. Nice. From the, old, uh, from the classic horror. Mm-hmm. Also, she's in Maniac and a lot of awesome stuff. So I'd love to get Caroline Monroe on the show. She's a Maniac. What was your role in Maniac? Just she's like the the she's the woman when he's when he when he's like the one that he kind of courts, like he starts oh. dressing nice and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's her. Very good. But yeah, she's gonna be there. That's awesome. So uh, for friends out uh, in England, go go to that. That'd be awesome. Is Lawrence Harvey coming on? Speaking of England, yeah, we have to. Uh, I know he wanted to come on when he's got a movie coming out, and he wants to come on uh, when that movie's coming out. I believe we are going to have to uh, record it. That's fine. That's yeah. one I will. I will set aside time. We'll have to do it on a weekend. All right. Yeah, we'll figure that out. We got a few yeah, people coming him on. In years and years. Every yeah. once in a while, he'll pop on and like like a post or something, which is cool. It's nice mm-hmm. to see Lawrence around. Yeah, or maybe we'll just make him stay up late. A shout out to our terrible Troy. Today was his last day at work. He retired. That's and he worked the same job since like high school, right? Yeah, right out of high school. A long time. I could never do such a thing. So yeah, last I'm very proud of him. And as soon as now, as soon as he's done, I'm putting him to work. We're going to start working on Arbor Day. I'm like, get to work. Start beating them. <laughs> yeah, Joe Fennell is amazing. Last horror show. I know I've seen this. Give this to me. Last horror show. I feel like I've seen this not. Billy even... Coin, the last horror show with Spinelli. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. New disc from Severn looks amazing. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I did see this on Tubi. All right. Crazy. He's great. Uh, Alejandro Bruges and Mike Mendez are both going to be coming on from uh, Satanic Hispanics. That's very cool. Sweet. Alejandro has got to be recorded because um, he has a fa- he has family thing on Tuesday and Thursday, so he can't do the live show. But we'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah, uh, Mike, people's Mike will probably families. be on. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. uh, that's coming to Shutter next month on the eighth. So uh, check out Satanic Hispanics. I love good anthology movies and i'm happy that they've made a comeback and this one is is one of the better ones of recent years i'm a big fan i gotta see it do i have a link yet yeah you should uh shutter should have sent you the link oh okay i'll have to find it i'm gonna attempt to to, we're we're gonna attempt to watch something here because i'm very excited i I don't think they'll they'll strike us because they should be happy we're plugging it but I am very excited about this. I, as people know, I love board games. Annabelle loves board games. Indeed. Um, so this new one's coming out. You can the Kickstarter. They were at a five thousand dollar goal. It's already over thirty thousand, so it's coming out. Bam. Um. Why is Good for them. Working? Whatever it may be. Yeah. Any one. It's the 20th anniversary of Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh. They have the, the board game where you can play all the people. Really? Yeah, can you be Dwight? Cool. Well, I'll get to that in a minute here. Oh, right. no. No Dwight. Here we go. Welcome back to the House of a Thousand Corpses. This year is its 20th anniversary, and to celebrate, 
why not bring a group of heinous murderers into your own home and reenact a gruesome story for yourself? Uh, In the House of Thousand Corpses board games from Trick or Treat Studios, you will play the part of the Firefly family. Work together to search through your house and make sure people who are inconveniently hiding there get what's coming to them. The different members of the family have different specialties. Expand adrenaline to form actions. And be careful. Taking the same action too soon is more costly. Collect trophies from your victims to enhance your abilities. Or build up the blood meter to win before those pesky police arrive and things get complicated. We appreciate your support in making this game a reality. We think you'll enjoy it. And if you don't, well... Wow. Yeah, that looks great. <gasps> and that uh, looks freaking amazing. So there's like uh damn. Um so since it's a t one to four players, 60 minutes, that sounds cool. I also like that we play all together. That's always fun. Yeah. I love co-op games. So the you got the four uh you've got the you know the three everyone knows Spalding, Baby, Otis, and you can also play the mother, Mother Firefly, which is pretty yeah. great. Karen Black. Um, I love the the marker here. That's mm -hmm. with uh, with with all the people. You got all the um the victims. You got rabbit cards, uh, trophy cards, which includes like severed hands and stuff, <laughs> a liver. I love, and I love the idea of having adrenaline and all these different things that yeah. give you power and. And then like. You can upgrade and get uh, actual figures instead of, you know, the, the paper yeah. guys, which is pretty cool. That's sweet. I'll unlock stretch goals. What are all the goals? on? What so are the goals the, off to the side there? Well, we're going to get to these down here. Mm -hmm. People play. All right. Stretch goals. So they hit the 7,000, which means the additional characters mm -hmm. of uh, Grandpa Hugo and Dr. Satan. <clears throat> So that's pretty cool. You'll be able cool. to play Hugo or Dr. Satan. Uh, they hit this one to get eight additional item cards. It looks like intestines and a uh, mask and, and things. They hit this one too. Now you can also play Earl Fireplay and Tiny. Pepe was asking. There he is. I they know. hit the stretch goal so you can actually play as Tiny. And I saw he's actually one of the, the figures too. So if you... Upgrade and get the figures. You can get a little plastic uh, time. Was that UV board? They haven't hit that yet, but they're getting really close. Oh. If they hit that, they're going to do a, a UV board. Okay. And then there's something under here, which is blurred out. So you can't even see that yet. I'm sure. I assume that's for 50,000. But they're over 30,000 already. So add-ons for I'm 10 sure. bucks. You can add the, the uh, House of a Thousand Cor Corpses coloring book. It's awesome. Oh, I didn't get the coloring book or get the information. For I the know, food. I know. I thought I'm gonna have to find that. them. I'll ask James. Yeah. Uh, wait, 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 what was this price thing? I, I here I am. What's the money all about, uh, Neil? It's shipping oh, yeah. prices: thirteen dollars for the United States, fifteen dollars. Well, for yeah, it's an awkward shape. Yeah. I can see that. Um, I don't know what this means. Dual player, dual layer player board. That's Kickstarter exclusive. So if you buy the game after the Kickstarter, you won't get that. There was something else down here. I don't know, maybe that was all of it. But uh, anyway, looks really fun. And yeah. I like a cooperative game. And I think it's fun that you're actually playing. Everyone's playing the family. And yeah, you've the, go the around and kill villains. You would think of them as the villains, but I guess in this one, they're just defending their home. Right. Right. Well, they kind of twist that around in the second movie. Like, who's the real villain and who's the, who's the hero? Mm -hmm. But anyway, it looks cool. And I like that uh, it's, mother, it's Mother Firefly from the first one, which is Karen Black. Yeah, Karen Black. I'm looking up this game. And uh, Tom Tolls is the is the sheriff there. Uh, yeah, Billy's our, all about it. One of our oh yeah, I I'm a huge fan of Tom Tolls. And for people who don't know, on his old website, it was pictures that Troy drew of him on his website. Yeah, which is really amazing. Great dude. Rest I think he, did he use your banner. Yeah, yeah, he had it on his banner. He had the picture Troy drew. Mm -hmm. Super nice guy. 
Let's see. Back Amazing to Sprite. Otis. Oh, wow. The miniatures are cool. If you click back this project on the Kickstarter, you mm -hmm. can see the miniatures, and they're awesome. Yeah, and oh, you can get, awesome. you, they're like 25 bucks, but if you get everything together, it's like $70. So it's actually only another $11 to get them. Mm -hmm. I know it's a little bit, but you got to realize it's an independent game, and, you know, it costs a lot to put these together when it's not like mass marketed. Yeah. And games are very expensive anyway. Oh, yeah. Like, if you just go to the store, that's how much they cost lot. anyway. Yeah. yeah. Wow. If you just get the basic game, it's like $59 or something. Yeah, $59. Uh, including the stretch goals. So get one copy of the tabletop game, including unlock stretch goals, which I assume was the figures and all the stuff you just went over with exclusive layered character mats. Additionally, access to pledge manager where other games and products can be added yeah oh 70 bucks is uh huh the game plus miniatures 150 is if you're retail only uh brick and mortar presence and would like to purchase at least one case which is six units of house of a thousand corpses game Includes all kinds of stuff. So if anybody out there actually has a shop, a uh, game Remember, shop, and they want to sell this, 150 bucks, and you get all the things. Only yeah. ships to certain countries. Understandable. It's a giant box. I remember when we were at a, a hobby store, a hobby store once over in Brookline. They had mentioned something about it, but I didn't really exactly understand what they're oh. saying. But that must be it about because uh, they had a game that was a Kickstarter exclusive, and then. Mm -hmm. Trip. Not night moves. That was the other place. Yeah, yeah. You know, Billy, Definitely. that is a great question. Um, there are tons of horror themed games, and they do well. Like uh, we played the, you know, coincidentally thing game. Was it the thing game? Yeah, we played the, the thing. Game. The thing and is it great. Was incredible. You have it's to have one of my favorite. Minimum of three players or four. Um, I think four. Yeah, but it was excellent. Um, not everybody always has that many people around, but if you do, it's incredible because you end up lying to each other about whether yeah, or not it encourages dishonesty. It, it really so it really builds a sense of paranoia because you don't know who the who the thing is, mm -hmm. especially as the game uh, goes on. And then if you are the thing, you try to sabotage, but you can't do it too uh, obvious because then everyone knows you're the thing. Mm -hmm. We all it's, thought so it was myself, Neil, our friend Jason Minton, our friend Seth Heiss, and what's Jason's cousin's name? I feel bad. I'm so bad with names. I know who he yeah, is. I forget. He, I, I, I forget too, he was wicked nice. He was very shy. Um, but it was fun. And then like it, everybody really thought Neil was it because you were so suspicious. They just they, so they do they are very untrusting, very suspicious. untrusting of me. And I was never the thing in any of the games, and they always just <laughs> <laughs> thought as the thing jason but, was who was the first thing jason maybe i thought it was obvious when he was the thing but the uh no i think he neither of us was and i thought it was all, i really thought he was because he looked like he was lying but then he i think he's just drunk i'm pretty uh, sure i ended up being infected and i no forget one ever that figured it out. yeah it was no one, one ever one. figured it out it i think a, to this day in this moment i'm now admitting that i was infected well i think we all yeah i think you have to tell it yeah but the um there was um we also played this really cool universal monster game. I forget the name of it. Yeah. That Terrified. Neil and I played in Horrified, a game Horrified. Pack. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. It's great. And each of the each of the monsters have special abilities and actually changes how the game's played. You know, it's yeah. a classic one. So it's Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, the mummy, wolfman, creature. And depending on how much experience you have playing the game, like it tells you which monsters to start with so that you're not just annihilated for your right. first time playing it was still challenging and the board is like uh, a village and it's got different areas that make sense for the different monsters so the mummy is i don't remember in a cemetery or whatever or a, maybe a tomb i don't know but the uh creature from maybe the black moons in like a swampy area and dracula is like in the catacombs underneath the city and it was just great. So you just have like however many monsters it tells you, depending on who's playing and what your experience is. 
it was just lovely. Um, it was a bunch of uh, uh, Lovecraft theme stuff. And those are for board games, and there's just so there's so many. Billy, that, look yeah. out about because there's a lot. There, there's of there's stuff. a series of slasher games. There's the My Bloody Valentine. Uh, there's Jaws. He has there's Jaws. Alien. Game. Alien. I would love to get because that looks. There's two aliens, right? One of them is marketed that that is extra amazing, or is that the thing? There's two different things, but I think I think it's the one I have is the one you was harder to get, and then there's like a more of a mass marketed one. Yeah, uh, there's some yeah. good, good stuff, really good stuff, and they're not all like Neil and I play the horrified game. It was just the two of us. You could find co-op games like that. Was was that a co-op game? It was a co-op game. Yeah, yeah. We were trying to help each other yeah, not yeah. get killed. Right. Oh, and um, then there's a uh, zombies, which I have, which is really fun. Oh, that's uh, like you're trying to stop them from taking over the city, yeah. and then there becomes more and more and more yeah. of them, and they're surrounding you in different yeah. places. And then they make two different yeah. horrified. They have the horrified one with the Universal Monsters. Then they have one with cryptids, which we haven't played, but looks really fun. So you can, it's got it's got like Bigfoot, Mothman, and stuff in it. And now, then there's one with uh, Greek monsters. Frogman. In yeah, I don't think Frogman's in Frogman. it. Frogman. I guess if you really, really, really wanted to, you could make a frogman and get some yeah. graph paper. Right. <laughs> I have so much graph paper, I can't believe it. Oh, Billy, by the way, um, you should check out Night Moves or anyone in the Boston area. It's in uh, Brookline near Coolidge Corner oh, Theater. Yeah. And you 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 pay a minute. It's not very much. You And you can play the whole day. And you could play all their board games and, you know, bring a friend or two and you could check out because they have a bunch of horror games. That's where we played Horrified. It is uh, not always easy to get in because the space yeah, is not ginormous. Busy. So sometimes there's a wait. So have something yeah. to do. But there's so many games. Uh, you pay the cover fee. You can choose to get food and beverage or not. And it's just it's a cool place to hang. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely, Billy. Let us know if you find anything. Got to get some gaming going on. Yeah. Uh, I I need to go grab a drink before before a uh, yeah. So can I play something? Five minute uh, break. Yeah, if I, we're gonna play. Yeah. Gonna go break. break. Me gonna, too. I'm parched. All right. Uh, I'm right. gonna play uh, a couple uh, trailers. We have the uh, trailer for Spirit Riser from Dylan Mars Greenberg and Amanda Flowers, who will be on the show next month. And cool. uh, I don't know if this is the premiere, but we're gonna play the we're gonna play the trailer, and I'll probably play another trailer, and then we'll be back. Okay. All right, we'll be right back. Thy soul shall find itself alone. Cindy, they're coming. <laughs> The spirits of the dead who stood in life before thee are again in death around thee. What the hell is your problem? What kind of freaky stuff have you gotten me into? Nothing, nothing, nothing! They all will return to me. <laughs> Sydney, where are you? I'm free alive! We know she isn't dead. You will not leave this circle. We demand that you speak to us about your intentions. All that is unknown will be revealed to you. Maya Copa. With light, like hope to mortals given. I will be the last spirit riser! It's probably past your bedtime. <laughs> past your bedtime. This 
supernatural came to earth one day and left another, all in the form of a young girl. Some knew her as the Spirit Riser. First time going on a date since I started presenting. Hi. Hey. She had a date with a chaser. She had no right rejecting you like that. They should know their place. What is it? Another all right circle jerk? Every skinhead and incel in town is running around with a tiny little heart on. Chris! <laughs> How many of them are there? There's definitely more than us. No harm in cracking some fascist skulls to see what's inside. Women are, women are, women are dying. This is my body. My body is mine. Don't belong to the government. And rape is on the whole field. Never fuck with queer filmmakers. Oh that man! Was, uh, Spirit Riser and uh, T Blockers. We were going to see T Blockers at Brooklyn, uh, at Brooklyn Horror Film Festival, but I don't think we had, we didn't oh, get to see it. Did we? No, no. Um, it was yeah. there. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. It yeah, it was wild like, from the trailer. There were too many overlapping blocks. Maybe yeah. that one actually, maybe that one was already taken because you had to like get into yeah, yeah. things. But that looks awesome. Yeah, it looks great. Um, I believe yeah. we actually uh were sent the, the uh screener. So oh excellent. We'll check that out. Look, yeah, it looks great. It looks awesome. Yeah. A lot of wild effects. It's, you know, I I I will say I put it up on our YouTube. They sent us the the trailer, and uh, most people thought it was like cool, but we did get a lot, of, uh, a few folks are like it's woke and blah blah blah. The, a few meaning like three. Yeah, but I mean, still, it's, that's a few. The sheer haters. It's the Neil haters. No, I mean it's uh, they weren't hating me, either. but anyway. Well, yeah, you know, but you know, aren't these your people that follow you around? Oh no, no I mean, no, this money. was on our YouTube. It was just some random people. Oh uh, well, fuck them. We don't need it looks them. great. It looks wild. Yeah. This very woke movie looks great. Exactly. 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 It is uh, a funny thing. I know uh, like a bunch of people mentioned it out in the interwebs that people saying woke as a as an insult and other people are like, you know, you understand what woke actually it means that you're aware and yeah, Wait. someone on my uh, earlier I saw they were like uh, Marvel or comic books in general are too woke now. They've gone woke, and I was thinking like, is it that kind of what they've always, they've always been progressive and about like the underdog and social? I mean, yes, for the most yeah. part, like, you know, wasn't that like I don't know? Do you remember the Hanna Barbera? You know, right, the Red the day, I yeah. know you didn't watch like children's things when you were a child. That's not that's like a reality. Uh -huh. right? That's not me making any, like you didn't see the Muppet Show or Sesame Street or you probably didn't see Smurfs. I saw Sesame Street. I watched Smurfs. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Did you see Smurfs? Mm -hmm. I used to the color really? forms of Smurfs. Yeah. Color forms are amazing. And I think you can make them with basic supplies too. You need to look into that. Oh, right. you mean things? That's it. Now, color forms was that when you had like a little book and you scratched? Yeah. Them on the page? No, you could, they would just stick on me. You can take them off. 
Oh, there were ones that you had to scratch onto the page. I hmm. think maybe not, but I remember having Star Wars ones. I think it was, yeah, because they were in the desert. Dang. Yeah, I remember well, playing with Shrinky Dinks. Shrinky you put them in the oven, and, and they're like. <laughs> Anyone out there who doesn't know what that is, you're so missing out. Is that yeah, you might think Shrinky Dink. What the hell is that? No, it's pretty great. Yeah, they're awesome. Uh, like the poster came out for the new uh, Street Trash. Oh my God! It's great. That's incredible. Coming I love the me. Melt the Rich. Yeah, Melt the Sorry. Rich. Some rich people are fine, but, yeah. but I like the reverse of the original film. Does have a little bit of uh, people are like you know what's the actual uh, you know what they're trying to say in this movie, and so this one's about melting the rich. I like it. It's pretty sweet. Um, and the, the original folks behind the original Street Trash, their total blessing. I love the director's last movie, Fried Berry, and this one's being oh, filmed great. In, in on actual film, 35 millimeter film. So it's got a many pluses going for it. But it's a good question over there for Pepe. Pepe. Uh -huh. Well, so there are me. Comments severed penis that is the question that is the qu severed penis is on the tip of my tongue wait what no but the uh yeah will there be severed penis i don't know dang we 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 rate films <laughs> on, with severed uh with bloody stumps i wonder if a movie if we gave a movie a severed penis what would that mean would that be good or bad mm, i guess it would be a bloody stump that's true. <laughs> hey, oh, Dave comments. I love that when John Cleese said that about the term of snowflake mm -hmm. used by sociopaths. <laughs> they just grant at the notion of empathy. Yeah, it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, uh, you know, whatever. From Sometimes Viper to Champagne. From Viper to the... Champagne. From Viper to Champagne. Now I want to know. Oh, I see. I, I see what he's saying. Viper is like the it's like the malt liquor that they're drinking in the first one. Oh, mm. that's that's interesting. Maybe I wonder what the, what is uh is the drug and is the is it put into some kind of you know like this, like a fancy scotch or something in, in this new one? Hmm. Yeah, I'm curious. I know that comic book that I got was freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh my god, Shrinky Dinks. I'm sorry, I'm over here looking them up. Amazing. We were so lucky to grow up in the time we did. You get the shrink. Yeah, but now we would have like the thing figures and stuff. Although you wouldn't be able to like buy it. I have it now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would appreciate. Well, I did have the rank. I don't know how playable that would be as a kid either. You know what I mean? It probably, you know. You could have it like, just pick it up and move it around. Your your parents be yelling, "Dude, don't mess, don't break that! It costs seventy dollars." Well, let me tell you that we used to have one of these sticker charts for behavior. Me and my brother. I guess we were horrible. I don't know. What do you mean you more? What? Nothing. Nothing. Go on. So you'd do the I was chart, horrible. And if you got I like am, a month or whatever. Be. You can just keep talking over me, Neil. Go for it. Just keep doing it. Keep interrupting my Naomi's stories, here. Childhood. But go on, go on. Then my we have to bring a Naomi. You talk about your childhood. Is she here? Naomi, yeah. Oh, we'll take her. All right. <laughs> and we are back I... here with Naomi Grossman. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Did I just uh, interrupt a domestic dispute? Yeah, she's screaming at me. <laughs> I was trying to tell about my. <laughs> childhood toy that uh i earned and was broken and it was just a dumb story you did not interrupt anything okay <laughs> so naomi what grossman what i'm behind you uh, uh, where are yeah, you i'm no, sorry but i'm just like cool. looking at this background and it's amazing what's happening back there? oh there's um about a 300 little peppers uh leering <laughs> down at me from all sides Oh, Not only little God. ones, there's a very big one right there. There's a really you. big yeah. one. Yeah. They're wow. all, I mean, they're all shapes and sizes. It's amazing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 It is. Size so of the pepper does not matter. <laughs> no, that's true. All right. It's how you use the pepper. 
<laughs> so, American Horror Story, which I, I was saying earlier, some people, when I've been to like horror conventions, they think I'm saying horror to begin with. Right. But now, yes. Yeah, so, but anyway, we, we, can you, first of all, give people an idea of what American Horror Story is? Sure. Uh, it's uh, my, it's a new one woman show. Uh, uh, and while it may seem like a very kind of convenient title, um, uh, seeing as I obviously have a relationship to the show, having played, you know, Pepper, um, uh, in multiple seasons among other, uh, roles in other seasons. Um, but, um, uh, it's, it's, it's actually about that. It's, I'm American. I'm a whore and it's my story. It's, um, and, uh, but, but this whore I should preface is not a, uh, a promiscuous whore. She's more of a, you know, woman who does what she's got to do to get what she wants. We all whore out in one way or another. And this is sort of my history of hustling from mm -hmm. actually, um, Annabelle, you were talking about your, your childhood toy. Uh, I had my own, you know, boy toy as a first grader. Uh, mm -hmm. His name is Brent Keller. He has, he plays a prominent role in this play. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, you, you kind of see how I, you know, hustle through, um, through from my, you know, uh, the, the odd jobs I've held to my even odder love life. I've kind of, I've made compromises along the way. And, you know, it's because that's what we we got to do, right? To get what we want. Fascinating. You, know, we met, you mentioned earlier, a week from today, it's playing in Boston. And then that Saturday, it's also playing in Boston. So we're, we're going to be coming Saturday. We're really excited about it. Yes. Yay. Yes. Yeah. I'm so excited. And, oh, uh, we yeah. are as well. Yeah. So when did you start writing it? You know, I really, I wrote this in the pan pandemic. <clears throat> I often say like bad times make for good art. And I'm, I'm sort of mm -hmm. hoping that that's what this is. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, oh, hello, Robert and Richards. Awesome. <laughs> um, I, I, uh, uh, you know, it's like writing, it's like opening a vein, you know, I'd rather like, even though I, 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 I do love it and it's something I'm very, I'm good at. I literally would rather, you know, organize my junk drawer, Marie Kondo, <laughs> my entire garage. You know what I mean? Like I'm, it's one of those things where I'd gone through all the activities of COVID, you know, <laughs> Um, and finally I was like, okay, I got to write this thing. I literally have no other excuse. There's nothing else to do on earth because I am not making bread and I am not doing puzzles. I will not be that lady. So I started writing the show and, um, yeah, it was, it was real therapy for me. I mean, it, it gave me purpose. Um, yeah. In fact, uh, you'll probably read about that in the program notes. I talk about, you know, almost offing myself in my you know <laughs> swimming pool uh only because my hoa at the time was um uh, had shut it down of course as they shut all you know canceled all fun for the year yes. um so uh you know it was one of those things where i just i had it kind of just glowing at me it, it, from my periphery at all time and um yeah it, the, the show was like the one thing kind of keeping me from from drowning <laughs> Mm -hmm. You said it's like therapy writing it, and I know you're a performer anyway, you know, actor and stuff. But what was it like to actually perform something that's so personal to you in front of a group of people for the first time? Well, it's not entirely the first time in that this is my third solo show, so I've I've been an open book for 20 years. I had my mm -hmm. first solo show was about my sort of coming of age story called "Girl in Argentine Landscape." It's sort of chronicles my um yeah coming of age in argentina um from there i went on to write carnival knowledge which was uh sort of my you know madcap adventures dating in la i kind of joke that it's like uh, you know sex in the city different coast crappier shoes um so you know that I, I, there was that and then this one so um I, they have about 10 you know 10 years in between each. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was time I was due for a, for a new one. So it's definitely like something I do. I'm, I'm yeah. obviously, I, I didn't I know that I'm my sorry. own muse. 
And you yeah. know this just for having like interviewed me in the past. Like I definitely, I'm very self-aware and I, 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 I love me a, a good cocktail party and kind of holding court uh, as a raconteur. And so, uh, you know, <laughs> let's face it, there weren't any parties during COVID. I had to, you know, I had a, a full hour and a half to fill, um, you know, and, and dream up the, 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 nec the next time we're on a, you know, in, in public together, gathering on a stage. <laughs> What's the inspiration for, to do the first one woman show? Like, were there other ones, the other one people shows that you watched? Or? Yeah. Um. Well, yes. To be honest, uh, I remember being uh, just past Brent Keller in first grade. Um, I remember seeing Lily Tomlin perform um, in her show, uh, Search for Signs of Intelligent Life in the Universe, ah. uh, when I was, yeah, like, I don't know. 11 10 11 years old and saying like that's what i want to do um mm -hmm. and what's really cool is i remember meeting her maybe <clears throat> actually it was exactly 20 20 years ago uh when i was performing my first show um I met her because she was being awarded the Maverick Award by the LA Women's Theater Festival. And guess who's being, and, and I told her the story at the time, and guess who's being um, honored with that very same award this year? That's wow. amazing. Congratulations. I know. Yeah. Like, wow, total full <laughs> yes. circle. I mean, I literally, like, I said that's what I want to do, and that's what I'm doing. But to really answer your question, what prompted that first one? It was, again, desperation not unlike covid um you know 20 years ago i could not get arrested in hollywood i was uh, you know i was doing i i just come out of northwestern theater school and mm -hmm. you know let's face it i was I, I felt very entitled you know what i mean like i was used to seeing people peers like you know seth myers and zach braff and Zoe Deschanel, like who didn't even graduate and she already already had her own, you know, sitcom. And I wonder, well, where's mine? Like I'm ready for my close up, you know? And so, and I'd gone several years with just like auditioning, getting callbacks on a veil pinned and then like crickets. And I figured, okay, I just need to like maybe cast myself, you know? And so that's really where it came from. It, it was born out of my own just sort of it, dissatisfaction with Hollywood and my ability to get cast. Yeah, I just thought, Ugh, I'll cast myself. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, we have a few guests and uh, friends of mine, you know, who make movies and stuff, who have a similar story that they uh, actually is almost all women who say that they couldn't get cast and stuff that they were interested in, and so you know they would write their own stuff to to put themselves in. I mean, I think anymore it's more the norm. Um, I mean. I know we have this like romantic vision of, I don't know, movie stars of yore who would, you know, go sit across, you know, sit at the bar across from Paramount lot and just like get discovered while they're sitting on a stool. <laughs> I just don't think that happens anymore. You know, like mm -hmm. right now, when you, when you watch a movie, most of the time, the producer is the, is the star men, mm -hmm. women, you know, I mean, Lisa, even Lisa Kudrow on like what, like the most popular television show probably in history, mm. she's still like creating her own projects and mm. not because she couldn't get, get uh, uh, cast otherwise at this point, certainly, yeah. but you know, because she wants to take control over what she's doing and yeah, yeah. maybe it's yeah, uh, something more she'd be interested in. Yes, exactly. Well, and that's how I feel too. I mean, um, I've just been casting some cool things, which we can't talk about, unfortunately. Although someone may have told talk me to, to try to needle, needle you about them. about this, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, but in the meantime, you know, let's face it. Like, you were, I'm never going to get a better role than than one that I've created myself, and I'm, you'll know what I mean by that when you see the show in a week. I think we need to do that. We're going to do this now. To yes promote Boston, right? Get, yeah. get your friends in, in, in the theater seats with you. Then we'll do this again. Cause you guys are all going to have a million questions. Like, wait, that I was like real. What? That was true. <laughs> and then we'll do it again in like, I don't know, six months, a year 
with mm-hmm. some of this stuff that I'm talking about. All right. Mm-hmm. So, you can talk like about the, projects. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yep. fine with that. That sounds good to me. Sure. I mean, it sounds fascinating. You're clearly brave, super passionate, believe in yourself. Now, I'm sure it took time because people don't just float into that. But really, really, yeah, very, you seem like a super impressive person, like a really powerful person. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I I guess I think, um, yes, I suppose that's true. But at the same time, like, what's the alternative? Like, mm-hmm. I feel like it's sort of my lot in life. Like, I, I really, um, I almost feel like it's my duty when I walk into a room like mm-hmm. I'm there to entertain. Like that's kind of that's what I'm here for, and mm-hmm. so I really, you know, I, you know, extroverts. We sort of we get energy from others, but I also like it's it's almost like it's my duty to to yeah. turn it up for people, yeah. and and so honestly, after social engagements, I'm very tired because I've been yeah. hot, <laughs> you know, and yeah. um. I can't remember where this was going, but um, I mean, like I said, the alternative is what? Like stay home and sh- be quiet and not tell my story. Like that's yeah. not really an option for me. Like that's, that's so counter like who I am and what mm-hmm. I'm here to do. Mm-hmm. So uh, how- is it brave that I'm getting up and telling my story? Maybe, but it's also like the alternative of like mm-hmm. holding up and, you know, shutting up about it. <laughs> isn't really an option either. So yeah. <laughs> You said uh, you get tired after a social event. How tiring is the uh, is the one woman show? Because it's all you and oh, it's you'll see. It's a monster. <laughs> it's it's really tiring. In mm-hmm. fact, I haven't uh, I haven't rehearsed yet for the day, so we'll be doing that after we uh, wrap here. Um, so <laughs> thanks for the reminder. I, I, <laughs> my day's just begun. <laughs> This is actually a Loke. Uh, Loke says he's definitely oh. going to say hi. He's uh, with his uh, child at the moment. Uh, I know about her being an open book. Tell them about the chicken costume guy. Uh, well, you know, a Loke is probably afraid because, you know, my my boyfriends have been my muse in uh, in in past years. And so mm-hmm. he knows one misstep and like... <laughs> you you are you're you're like the center the epicenter of a, a, a the new the next Naomi the Grossman hit um n- no but uh yeah I did I dated a guy in a chicken suit um was he always in a chicken suit is that how you met him great question um yes uh well no he wasn't always in a music he was in a he was in a uh chicken suit when I met him we were stopped at a at a stoplight um in you know convertibles like you do we're you know flirting yeah and you saw a chicken the, you know window yeah. and um Very exciting yeah and he's dressed as a chicken and i'm apparently a furry uh, <laughs> that was my um, next question yeah. but we uh yeah um uh he asked me for my number and of course mm-hmm. then the light changed and so i'm like <laughs> You know, racing <laughs> to the next light, like slowing so that I can, you know, make sure I hit, make the red uh, or make the yellow. Um, yeah, I gave him my number through the window, and um, that was uh, the beginning of really nothing. But um, we, did go on, um, we we went on a several dates, um, but it all kind of fell apart when he like showed up one day in like you know khakis and a polo yeah it like, doesn't have the chicken like, suit yeah yeah like if you're not wearing a costume like what are we doing really <laughs> you know like that's that's the thing that's what we do so yeah we didn't have a whole lot of uh longevity unfortunately <laughs> uh dave loves uh i think he might have missed the beginning he says he loves the uh painting behind naomi the big head with the red curtain <laughs> yeah this one is amazing this was given to me in toronto at um oh. Uh, a comic con that's what i love about this room i can literally look around and be like oh orlando florida oh sao paulo brazil oh like i'm like you know i remember each one and and actually a lot of these have been um are actually component pieces in my new nft collection so it's cool i've like you know repurposed them they they 
uh, you know, let's face it, my art has inspired others' art. Now their art has, is fueling my art um, because, you know, the NFT collection is what's helping to pay for American mm -hmm. Horror Story. So it's, it's this cool sort of meta sort of cycle I've got working. And where can people find that, the information about the NFTs? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it's all uh, the, the specific uh, link to that is app dot variant dot io that's v r y n t dot io but you can also just check out the website for my new show american horror story dot com that's w h o r e um and when you look at when you go to play with me that's the name of my collection so you can kind of check it out there see what people are making yeah uh, billy wants to know billy coin a local effects artist uh, how long was the pepper makeup freak show is my favorite season it was mine as well not just because you're here oh um mine as well <laughs> because i'm here um, <laughs> um <coughs> let's see the pepper makeup took about two and a half to three hours um that's with two you know emmy winning artists working feverishly splitting me down the middle Wow. Um, and of course, that doesn't include the day, for example, we did the um, the freak show, the freak orgy, if you remember from season uh, season four, episode one, You're they actually gave me a full body like chest. And, um, you know, I had man hands and <laughs> I mean, I mean, it was that was like a full like six day job. I remember one of the producers seeing me kind of hanging out on set and he was like oh, somebody get me get pepper a robe and of course i was like i'm wearing more clothes than i would wear to the beach like i am <laughs> covered right now though it you know you wouldn't know it but i don't i don't have actual like large <laughs> male breasts <laughs> with yes. hair coming out of them for god's sakes <laughs> right. i'm disappointed now no no but i know i'm yeah. so sorry <laughs> So I like that you have all that there. So you all behind you because you you obviously like Pepper. So how 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 life changing was the role of Pepper? Oh well, that's that's in the show. But um, okay. yeah, I mean, listen, this is the the hand that feeds me. So you know, she bought me this house. Yeah. La least I can do is give her a room. You know, um, I you know in in many ways it was totally life-changing um i uh, uh, you know uh, all of a sudden tmz's jumping out of the bushes at me uh, there's you know pepper for president posters on the telephone poles you know ebay sellers are waiting my arrival at lax to sign their pepper Fun funko pop figures like it's just like all everywhere i look there's some like some craziness you know hmm. um but then at the same time it's like meh I would still go, you know, from Paramount, I, you know, clock out as Pepper and then I go moonlight at the Lingual Institute conjugating verbs for money, you know? So <laughs> it's like, we do what we got to do. And so, you know, I still put both feet in my pants. What's that expression? You know, <laughs> one, at a le one leg at a time. I I've one leg at yeah. a time. That's thank you. <laughs> Very well. When I first met you, it was at a convention in LA and it was after you first played Pepper, but before a freak show. And you hinted on that interview that, you know, we may see more of the character. And so it was very cool to see, you know, that uh, we saw more of Pepper. And what was that like to, you know, to play the character again and go more in depth? That was a dream uh, because, uh, I mean, it was, I didn't see that coming. Um, it hadn't ever happened before. And, you know, why me? That's how I felt about the whole experience. I mean, you know, they kill off Adam Levine, like the hottest guy in all of Maroon 5, much less, you know, the universe, uh, in the first five minutes of Asylum. And yet they're keeping me, like me. <laughs> like, like what, are, what are they doing? Um, so then to, like, bring me back uh, was, that was crazy. Um but it was, it was great. I felt, you know, all of a sudden, like I was, I really belonged. It wasn't, you know, I really suffered from a lot of like imposter syndrome that whole first mm -hmm. season, but by, <laughs> by freak show, I was like, no, 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 I'm like, I'm, I, I belong here. Like they brought me here. Like they 
put me on a plane to New Orleans, just like they did Sarah Paulson and Kathy Bates and Angela Bassett. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, I had to take up space because that, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So it was, uh, it was, it was fun. There was obviously new challenges. Like I had to remember like, Oh, what had I done two years ago to, you know, this lightning in the bottle? Like I need to recreate it. Um, except I needed to create like a, a younger version even. So even though I was technically older, you know, Pepper was what, 15 years younger, maybe. Yeah. So there were, you know, there was other sort of challenges, which were not just for me, but for, you know, let's face it, hair, makeup as well. You know, yeah. I had a slightly smaller fat suit, <laughs> et cetera. <laughs> When you first saw yourself in the pepper, full pepper, like how did that influence how you played pepper? Like, did you have a different mindset? And then when you actually see yourself as pepper? Oh yeah. I didn't know what pepper was at all. When I first got the role, it didn't, they didn't say as much. They didn't, there was no mention of, you know, microcephalic or anything like that. So um, I knew that they were looking for a four to five feet tall, possibly malformed, childlike actress um but like what does that even mean like <laughs> yeah. um and of course now now we know like they're they're kind of like hinting at like various qualities that they would want mm -hmm. Pettifer to have but without like revealing to all of hollywood you know to all the actors and agents and managers and everybody mm -hmm. who's reading that breakdown exactly what american horror story is do doing this season so mm -hmm. um yeah, I mean, it really, it was the makeup people that basically informed me of what I was going to be doing. I mean, they kind of like, they showed me, they they did the makeup <laughs> and then, and they shared with me, of course, Schlitzy, the real life microcephalic after whom this role was modeled. And it was my job to kind of emulate him and, and, and do, do Schlitzy. Um, so yeah, it was crazy. I mean, to get all your direction from like the makeup people. Yeah, but had you, know, you already had the role at that point, or was that like, mm -hmm. did you have to audition as that? Or, I mean, I auditioned as that, but I didn't know that's what it was. Just, okay. You know what I mean? Like, they had me, they gave me a ball, they being the casting, gave me a ball, and they asked me to try to get them to uh, get them to play with me <laughs> as if I were a four year old. Like, again, it's kind of like Pepper, but without the full like affectation yeah. um then they had me do a monologue of jessica langs from season one hmm. which again now at the time i was like what is this uh but especially since that had already been shot you know but at the same time um you know that was really just to see that i could that I had range, that I could go from the early, you know, playful pepper to the later, you know, alien abducted pepper. Yeah. So, yeah. So yes, I had already been cast as pepper. I just, we, I hadn't established what that even was yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dave, man, he likes your quote. I still put both feet in my pants. <laughs> it is ridiculous. <laughs> Bring that. Forward. I don't use my words. The, the words don't come out of my mouth. But yes, I put my feet in my pants. <laughs> I like the idea that maybe someone out there does it. They have one leg out of their pants and just one leg in them. Well, during COVID, yeah, I didn't have any feet. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Pants. Yeah, at that no. point. Yeah. <laughs> this show was written without any feet in any pants. <laughs> You've naturally very comic presence, and you really it's so clearly there. You're just energetic. You're on the go. You're quick thinking. Did you ever do any kind of stand up anything other than like, you're obviously doing stand up, doing these stories, but I'm wondering if you did stand up ever. Um, stand up. I mean, yes, I have like, yeah, a couple, like a time or two, like for mm -hmm. like five minutes. Um, I didn't, really take to those like you know bringer shows um that bringer shows being like basically coerce your friends into paying thirty dollar mm -hmm. cover with a two mm -hmm. drink minimum and park their car for fifty dollars like it's a whole thing and it's like yeah. and and they're really just taking one for the team like the, the shows are not good so um 
you know, I, I, I definitely like cut my teeth comedy wise at the groundlings, which is of course, um, sketch comedy and, mm -hmm. and improv. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, a lot of, you know, big comedians have come out of there. And so I definitely, I, I would say, uh, well, you're about to see it all, but, um, yeah. you know, comedy wise, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm much more comfortable in a, in a wig with a, you know, mm -hmm. in a character. Um, yeah. uh, that said, I mean, my solo shows, which are, are me They're, yeah. I mean, here, if I love playing someone else, this is all Naomi, like through mm -hmm. and through. Um, and, but it's the, what I like about it is that I am funny, but there's not pressure to be like, it's, yeah. it's storytelling. And sometimes it's hilarious. And sometimes it's like, what did she say that? Like, I'm laughing, but like, oh my God, I can't like, now I want to cry. And now yeah. I'm like, I'm embarrassed. And now I like, you know, all the feels. So um, that that's my favorite part, honestly, when it's, when it's, we're laughing, laughing, laughing. And then all of a sudden, like record scratch, like, oh, yeah. shit, someone, <laughs> is he still alive? That, you know, <gasps> is it over? Like that, that's my favorite part. Yeah. Wow. Which you can't that's... really do with stand up. You know what I mean? I mean, you yeah. can, but. But then it's know, like. When it gets it quiet gets for too long it's sort of all over. Whereas as far as I'm concerned, when it gets tight, when it gets quiet for too long on my shows, that's mm -hmm. when the start, the show really begun, begins, yeah. you know? Yeah. What, what's the stage like um, for, for your one woman show? Is it uh, just you? Is there like uh, stuff in the background? Or? Um, there's projections. Oh. So yeah, um, I've got really awesome um, video components and, and photos from my, you know, childhood and, mm -hmm. um, you know, trajectory, you'll see. Um, I learned the hard way, you know, when I did my shows, uh, my prior shows, I, I took one of them to Edinburgh, Scotland, which is, of course, the mm -hmm. home of the largest theater festival in the world. And that show, I mean, I had like a wack -a weenie <laughs> and I mean, which was fantastic, you know. It's this Who doesn't large, love a whack a weenie? You can imagine it's literally like a whack a mole, but it has, you know, dildos <laughs> in its place, and it's a metaphor, of course, um, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, but you know, I, I found it was like I can't bring this whack a weenie to Scotland, so you know, I had a, a backpack full of dildos, which I learned to juggle, you know. <laughs> sort of comparable um sure. but so with this time i was like no 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 dildos i'm not dealing with <laughs> stuff uh -huh. i want to be super minimal just me and like like a something fabulous to wear um because i can't be naked unfortunately and um and you know and uh, some projections behind me hmm. Uh, did that, was that ever, uh, so when you're traveling with the dildos, uh, did that ever, when you were at like the airport or anything? Was it ever a problem? Yeah, yes. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've, I've opened my luggage and it's like, there's this TSA, <laughs> you know, <laughs> thank you for, you know, I can only imagine, you know what, if all I, if, let's face it, they have, I don't want to say they have boring lives for all we know they're <laughs> have very exciting lives but you know mm -hmm. i wouldn't want to be working for the tsa and so um you know if i can just bring a little joy from you know them going through my you know pepper pictures and my my dildos and my my chicken suits then <laughs> then that's the least i can do that's what sure. i'm here for my job is done sure I it's like neil's that, yeah. new traveling plan to try to uh Make yeah, it came up in, in my... it came up in Annabelle's like memory thing was it was uh where when, when, no when they, they were scanning my hands for ions oh, yeah. and I was I was actually concerned like what does that even mean and no one really gave me an answer. I yeah, was I'd does gone this mean through I'm, like, radioactive security. or something. I went through security, no issue, and I see Neil stop waiting, and so I took a picture of him, and they're scanning his hands. Mm. Yeah, for, and I, and I, you know, I asked what, what they were, and they said that, like it came up for ions, and and I was like, what is that? Because I was like, you know, what, what does that mean? Should I be concerned? Should I, you know, I don't know. I still don't know what it means, honestly. I think we all have ions. I don't know. I didn't pay attention in science class, but. <laughs> 
Yeah. But I'm, I this was a long time ago. As, as, as Neil did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, when you when you did the the show, the your older shows, and you took them to other parts of the world, the country, other parts of the world, uh, did they did they play differently for different audiences? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I definitely remember um, having to cater certain jokes because they were like, "Ah, that's too American. Nobody, hmm. they don't say that there or whatever." Hmm. <clears throat> One thing I remember learning is that they tell time in a whole nother way in in Great Britain. Like they say, like half 10 that's what that's like 9 30 and i'm like half 10 like <laughs> half 10 is five like right that's what so here right, i am right. telling people my show is at five but it's really at 9 30 or vice versa i literally i remember going through the entire run and finding out i'd been telling time wrong the entire time i'd been on the royal mile in my you know beaded thong and massing, matching pasties, handing out flyers for my show. And I find out I've been giving the wrong time the whole time. Wow. <laughs> but also my show was at like 1130 at night on like the fifth floor of a like, which is, I'm sorry, like actually after like five o'clock in Scotland, not only is it dark, but they're drunk. So they are <laughs> not going to get up those five flights of stairs. <laughs> Like the best time to do a play in Scotland is like two in the afternoon. Like, <laughs> yeah. Is, is this the first time you've done American Horror Story outside of uh, California? Uh, no, actually, I did it uh, in New Mexico, uh, where uh, my family's from, or I, I'm from. Um, for I, I did that like right around the holidays, just to kind of warm up, because uh, I, I we were it was really a reprise from when we first originally did it here in June uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, then from New Mexico, um, it's funny, I, my, I got, my flight got canceled five times uh, home. And so at that point I was like, I think this is a sign. I think I'm supposed to stay. And I think I was supposed to re revamp this show. And so I did, mm. I did like a little extension we were, you know, we were sold out that first run. So then I did it again and yeah. sold out the second. And from there, uh, went to New York and did it off Broadway at the AMT theater right near mm -hmm. Times Square. Um, and yeah, it was, uh, it was on the way back from New York, actually, that I got to talking to um, the promoter of the Northeast Comic Con. And he was like, oh, why don't you come, yeah. you know, come, come to our con and do your show. So I thought, okay. So, um, yeah, I wasn't, I hadn't even left the East coast before I was like booked to go back. Wow. That's what awesome. was the response at the Comic-Con as opposed to other venues? Well, so I haven't done that yet. That will be next. Oh, week. okay. So yeah, it was you really just see. sort of, uh, you know, I'm going to be all the way there. Might as well. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. I wish that the theater was like associated with the con and that mm -hmm. the, the con goers would just like cross the street and go to the show. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little, it's not quite set up that way. Um, but it's also important that I be in an, an actual theater. Um, yeah. Like I don't want to be in some, you know, conference room. Auditorium. N yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. You'll see yeah, it's much hotel. more theatrical. It, it, it deserves like a proper space. So mm -hmm. I know Loke's a friend of yours, but he's really been putting this over or over to me that he's seen it multiple times and he loves it. And so we're really looking forward to it. Uh, well, I think he's just glad he's not actually a character in it at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but I tell him, I was like, no, no, you, you have to screw up much worse. Uh, you know, you have to, <laughs> or just be really, I mean, not that he's not, I mean, he's a character unto himself, but you know, like, he didn't pick me up in a chicken suit. Let's face it. <laughs> you know, um, you'll see, like I said, my exes are very much my muse. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there is a, there are two exes in particular in this new show. Uh, one of which I think is kind of the hero in the show in, in sort of a very sweet way. The other is 
absolutely lambasted. Um, I, I am the Taylor Swift of comedy, uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, much less paid. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, she, uh, I mean, this guy, he, he, he doesn't, he'll never sue me because, well, A, I blacked out his face, so <laughs> he's nothing to sue me on. But also, I mean, he's such a, uh, he's such a horrific character that like he would never cop to that. You know, <laughs> right, right. That's interesting. So I'm yeah. safe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, that's me. Like, whoa. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. no, he'll never. <laughs> <laughs> now, Awoke does want me to also mention that 1BR is available on Amazon Free V, 2B, Peacock, mm-hmm. Little TV, Roku Plex, and Zumo. Indeed, indeed. He's probably the, every second that I'm not talking about B- 1BR <laughs> and we're talking about either American Horror Story, American Horror Story, he's like, um, <laughs> but yes, 1BR, 1BR, 1BR. Yeah, um, it's a great movie, though. It is. And I guess we're not supposed to talk about a sequel, but like, I'm ready already. He's like, mentioned it, sort of. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a lot. I mean, yeah. You can't kill a good horror movie. Yeah. Right? He's number yeah. one on uh on um Netflix for a while. Yes. And so yeah, uh-huh. people want to see a sequel. Yes. Did you know a Loke before one BR or did you get to know him from one BR? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been friends for 25 years oh, wow. prior. I didn't wasn't aware. Okay. How did yeah, you know? yeah. In fact, he and um it was his first movie, you know, and he yeah. um uh, he came to me with the script and, um, I mean, at, at that point I had already was pepper. So, um, and you know, we'd always sort of fantasize about wanting to work together, but then mm-hmm. when he like actually was producing something and I actually had a name worth putting in a movie, we were like, Oh, well then we should definitely do this. Uh, but, um, I remember him coming to me with the script and saying, you know, what do you think? And I thought it was great. You know, like it has definitely has legs. Um, and then I didn't hear anything about it for a, a, quite a while. And then all of a sudden I got an audition and I was like, what? A, an audition? You mean I, I have to audition? <laughs> <laughs> just put me in already. Now I do know in retrospect now, like that, that was really just a chance for me to meet the director and, you know, mm-hmm. for him to find out that I'm a, not a complete freak show, et cetera. Um, just a partial, so, you know, it's, it's fine. <laughs> but at the time I remember being like, seriously, hello, seriously. Um, of course he likes to remind me it's not normal for the actor to go out drinking with the producer after the audition. <laughs> like I, I had the role, <laughs> but, um, you know, the funny thing is <clears throat> our, our friendship, uh, over those t- 25 years of, mm-hmm. you know, 20, 25 years prior to one BR, uh, we play um, uh, Drunken Trivial Pursuit, and a uh, 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 the ending needs a part two. Oh, yes, it does, mm-hmm. Robert and Richards. Um, uh, I was gonna say uh, the, we we play Trivial Pursuit, and a is very very you know crafty. He he would read the questions in such a way that were. So so jacked up i could actually know the answer but he would like read the words so quickly but you literally wouldn't know the answer and so i I, like i would lose when i straight up knew these questions and 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 so and but what i'm saying is when we he when we uh when he had me audition for him he actually read the you know usually there's a, a reader but of course because this was a, a low budget film he mm-hmm. he was actually his own reader um but of course he was reading to me as if he was trying to stump me in trivia pursuit mm-hmm. and of course i was just like why are you doing this to me like this is not the time to try to like <laughs> get me like this is the time to <laughs> get me you know what i mean <laughs> Anyway, it was, uh, I mean, listen, bless his heart. He was wearing many, many hats. He was producing the movie. If you watch it, you'll see he's he plays an extra in it half a dozen times. I don't know how many times he was in Video Village and they were like, hey, get in there. And he's like, but I'm wearing a, you know, but I'm wearing a logo. And they'd be like, take it off. I'm like, wardrobe. 
you know, uh, I mean, he tells a hilarious story about uh, when he was going to fetch uh, feminine energy drinks for the uh, then lead of the movie. Uh, I'm sure you've heard all these stories when he did your podcast, but um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but again, like he usually there's some sort of gopher, you know, there's some kind of like minion to go <laughs> buy the damn drinks for the diva. No, 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 no. Alok. Alok was doing all of it. He was wearing all the hats and bless his heart for it. Yeah. So yeah. we're looking forward to 1BR. What is, do you know what the sequel would be called? We, uh, maybe that's a question for one. I mean, the obvious is 2BR, which of course, <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, duh. But uh, <laughs> I know he's, 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 he's uh, vehemently opposed to that. Um, I do know what the name of it is, but again, I don't think it's my sure, sure, thing. yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we're all looking forward to it, so that's cool. I mean, don't get me wrong; he wants us talking about that. This, oh, that's yeah, why yeah, he's yeah. piping in right now. <laughs> you know, yeah. he's like, yeah, he wants yeah. us talking about it, but then, like, I can only say so much. You know, it's just like the trickery with the with Trivia Pursuit. I see. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, he is. Uh, he is an absolute mastermind genius freak <laughs> film I, I i have to work on that i'm gonna put the words uh, you know it's kind of like putting your feet in the pants i'm gonna figure it out exactly <laughs> what his title is do you know lately what he's been up to he goes to the cineplex where they're showing the the movies that are currently nominated for uh you know best the, yeah, best yeah. uh short yeah. uh, oh yeah you know because he has a friend who's uh, produced a uh, um uh, war is over yeah oh, which i got to helps. see i got to see at uh, amc a couple weeks ago they showed uh the animated shorts and the live action shorts there you mm -hmm. go okay well had had a lope been in your theater you would have caught him with a single tear dripping oh. down his eye at that exact moment in in uh you know in war is over meanwhile i'm like wait on on the off chance that there's like an academy voter in the audience like that's insane <laughs> like you know i mean i'm an actor i'm a i'm a performer <laughs> through and through like if you know, I I live You're to like, be oh, like oh, on oh. for people, <laughs> but I'm not gonna like cry on cue on the off chance that there might be a voter within <laughs> eye shot. Like that's just <laughs> absolutely insane. It's also brilliant. It is, yeah, yes. it's, yeah. It's a very it's de dedication. It's almost. total dedication. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's great. So where can people um, get tickets, and where can they also see, you know, in the future where uh, American Horror Story goes? Yes, um, you know, we're at a place called the Regent Theater in Arlington, mm. Massachusetts. Yeah, and I'll um, have a link for that. Yeah, and I want to say it's through their website, and I don't. The link is like I'll, I'll those, put like, the link. I'll put the link right URL, here. URL, blah 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 yeah. blah. Which oh, is not really? going to come off the tongue. So yeah. I would just say go to AmericanHorrorStory.com. If you go to Ticks or Get Ticks, it'll take you right there. It'll nice. take you to the blah, 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 blah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, that, and that's also the same the place where you can find out where we go next. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I you know, I'll I'll tell you on my socials, certainly. But sure, sure. yeah, we there's definitely a tab that says, you know, where to next. And we're always mm -hmm. looking for yeah. where to go so we yeah. definitely have a couple other you know upcoming um upcoming uh spots but we'll you know gonna jj abrams that uh, for our fans <laughs> so as well can you <laughs> see the previous um one person shows or are they you know once you see them you know you can't see them again uh no that's a good question um I will bring some with me on uh, DVD. I know most people don't have DVDs anymore. Actually, horror fans do. Yeah, yeah. Fans, even at VHS, VHS, you can put out the yeah. uh, special edition VHS tape. Yeah. Um. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm holding them very close to my vest right now because ideally, at one point, we will sell this show to a streamer, and right. yeah. that will be intellectual property. We can like, 
you yeah. know, some DVD extras or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, maybe package the deal. Um, but yes, uh, they were selling like hotcakes in New Mexico <laughs> after my last uh, last run. So I will definitely bring some because people are always curious. Like, yeah, it's you know, cool because uh, a lot from? of yeah, a lot um, of time, you know, if you don't go see a live show, you, that's it. You can, which there, there's something cool about that that you know you, you're part of the people that see it. No one else can ever see it, but. Also, you know, the idea of it being, you know, you, you have it forever. You can, you know, it's out there for people to see. Yeah, no, um, I mean, these shows, what's cool is, you know, especially during the pandemic, we started to see shows like this on Netflix, on Hulu, yeah. you know, Mike Birbiglia, John Leguizamo. I mean, not that like they just started doing it, but yeah. we just started watching this, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, but I've had these for, you know, since I did them. And yeah. um, it's just we we weren't used to watching like theater on video like this, uh, but now we are. And um, and they they hold a candle to to even the best of them. So I'm I'm very proud of them. I'm ex so excited for you to come. Yeah. Um, I will definitely come out afterwards. You know, we'll, we'll do a whole photo shoot, shoot worth of selfies. Um, and uh, and we'll definitely need to schedule our next one because yeah. you're going to have questions. <laughs> I, yeah. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, because you made such a great sales pitch for this movie. Yeah. Uh, this movie, your show. Oh, good. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, John Leguizamo. When I was uh, in high school, the, the, his one people, one person shows were great. I love those. And Annabelle and I saw Chaz Palminteri's one man, um, uh, Bronx, Brooklyn, Tale. Uh, Bronx Tale in uh, Boston last year. Yeah. That was amazing. So we're really looking forward to this. Awesome. Oh, that's great. Well, good. Yeah. Well, tell friends. We got a big theater. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, we're um, gonna... I definitely can use all the help I can get. And, mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Right. We'll yeah. see you next week. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah, and we'll talk to you again several times. We have them all planned out. <laughs> we do. We have a whole itinerary. Yeah, like a year's Absolutely. worth of interviews here. Yes, eventually there will be a two br, and we'll we'll even talk about that too. All right, all right, to be or not to be, that's very good. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. That's my. I stole it from my mom. My mom. That's my mom's joke. Whenever she turns on to be, she says to be or not to be. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, yeah. But I want to give her credit in case she's watching. So you stole my joke. But ah. I do have one last question here. Dave Deadman says, "What is a feminine energy drink?" I'm intrigued. <laughs> Oh yes, Dave Deadman. Um, is that your real name? <laughs> I think it's his, his, his given name. No, I don't. Think. I mean, I'm Grossman. That's <laughs> very yeah, true. I never right? thought of it that we're, way. It's yeah. like we're like horror fans. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's like German horror yeah. people. You no, know, his, his real name's Steve. It's Steve Deadman. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, a feminine energy drink. It's an excellent question. Uh, it sounds to me like a, a pink Red Bull. It sounds to me like, you know, some soapy adrenaline rush mm -hmm. with a gimmick, you know, to try mm -hmm. to like sell the chicks. It's stupid. Uh, <laughs> but evidently, you know, again, God bless a loke. He wasn't going to let his starlet uh, be without her, you know, special sauce. So he <laughs> drove across town and was, you know, off to fetch it. If I if if that were me, I'd be like, uh-uh, we're we're not doing that. That's that's just dumb. You can drink Red Bull like everybody else. Calm down. All right, and then one tear comes down. Though. Yes, yes. <laughs> but again, I'm also not going to the Cineplex uh, doing a, a, a solo performance for like <laughs> the one Oscar voter that happens to be sitting in the audience, hoping that they look over at me. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Like. When you're when you're in a theater, you're probably not even looking. You're watching the, the other... movies. You're not <laughs> yeah. watching the theater. No, but he was committed. He is committed. <laughs> and listen, when they win that Oscar, I am gonna. He's yeah. going, and he, you know what? As he should. He he That's belongs good. there. He yeah. worked for this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He cried. His tears are yeah. They're in the in the Oscar. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. <laughs> Well, this has been very fun as always, and we'll talk to you very soon. Yes, right. you will. Yeah, and see you even sooner. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yay. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Good to meet you. We'll talk to you again.
All right. Oh, that was great. Yeah. She's great, great mm -hmm. energy. I can't yeah. wait to, I didn't ask a lot of questions because it sounds like we're going to learn a lot of things. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I am too. This is going to be really fun. So it's a, a week from today um, for the, will be the first show. So people get your tickets. And then that Saturday will be the second show. And that's the one we'll be at. Get out there. Put your butts in the seats. The sounds are great. She's a wonderful saleswoman. Uh, yeah. When she started talking about the comedy and then going into the darkness and just sounds fantastic. Thank you. I'm yeah. really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be excellent. All right. Absolutely fantastic energy, Dave says. I agree. Amazing. Um, LOL to tears for real. <laughs> the tears for fears. I oh, like this was not so. Was this not a sincere tear from a Luke? Like maybe he just cries every time he sees that. Yeah, scene. he's just. A Luke has a heart too, I think. He does. Yeah, a Luke's does a he, really good guy. Is it in there. Yeah, yeah, I don't know Luke as well as you. He seems like a good guy. Though. No, I like him a lot. I yeah. like him a lot. We we uh, hit it off right away the first time we had him on the show, and it was awesome. He came out when uh, we were there uh, for Psycho Ape Two, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we'll uh, see him again down the road. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he's a for good sure. dude. Very yeah. funny, and I very and he uh, he he uh, very supportive. He gives me advice oh, yeah. and stuff. I like the guy around. He's a good dude. I loved when he did the uh, the top show or movies of 2023. Yeah. He'd be like, Horn VR! <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Shudder! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was great. Yeah. yeah. We need to get him back on for, uh, for a, a list show. It'd be fun. Definitely. Awesome show. Oh, Thank you, Billy. Billy's a good man. It's really cool to meet Billy. I've known him for a while yeah. on the internet, and it was cool to meet him in person. So, how about a break? Is that doable? And then that we'll come is very back doable. and talk, talk about the, the things and the and stuff. Yes, yeah, to tell stuff you about here. my rancor that broke. Yes, and I'm and sorry. I cried, for and my mom was like, "Tough shit, you broke it." And then it was just gone. I didn't even get the broken one with like an armless rancor. Damn. I know. I got it out. I got it out of my system. I've shared my painful story. Every Thursday night, yes, Robert, we start at 7 p.m. EST, sometimes a few minutes late, depends on, you know, because we don't, if, if I, sometimes I'm a little bit late, uh, sometimes guests are a little bit late. Neil is always ready. Neil is Yeah, ready. I am, but, but um, I kind of have to be or else, you know, because I stream the shows. You kind of do. But yeah, seven plus five minutes at times. But, oh, awesome. Wonderful, Robert. Glad to have you. Very cool. Yeah, and uh, do us a favor. I know Robert, well, he's a good man. Uh, share out these shows if you like them. Uh, and also share out the link for Naomi's uh, tickets for Boston. That will uh, help out the show. Yeah, anybody who wants to share out that link would be amazing. Because even yeah. if people can't do the Boston show, which is awesome, if you can, there's a whole bunch of stuff coming up for her. So she's going to be on the road. Give support to Naomi. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, live show, so next week we'll be live. I'm just going to say who this is because I'm uploading a, 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 a video here that we can play for the break. Mm -hmm. It's uploaded. Uh, let me grab who's coming on next week. But we've got a lot of cool guests uh, coming up. I've been trying to keep oh, up yeah. with, with Banner, showing everybody. Uh, Richard Lewis passed away. Not not horror, I but uh, I'm a big fan. And Yeah. So uh, let's see. Next week. Uh, Chad Farron, director of H.P. Lovecraft's The Old Ones. Yeah. And the uh, filmmakers of Vampire, Not Your Grandma's Bambi. So this It's another is one I have to movie. see. We got that one too, right? I don't think so. I think they just yeah. now filmed it. So. Okay. Oh, okay. I, know, I think they're filming it now because they're, they're, they're going to be promoting the uh, Kickstarter for it. Cool. All right. But I'm there for it. Vampire. Yeah, that'll be good. And then um, that was it. my story was that I broke a toy the first moment I got it out of the box outside on the little porch table. And 
It didn't get replaced. It didn't even get given. I could have kept it without the arm. It would have been crippled a bit. That's not the word to say nowadays. It would have, you know, it would have just had one arm. I would have gotten over it. Yeah. And then we get coming up Dylan Mars Greenberg, Amanda Flowers, The Spirit Riser. We played the trailer earlier. Alejandro Bruggs and Mike Mendez from Satanic Hispanics. And then March 28th uh, on the live show, Dan um, from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And we'll also have the cast and crew of one Just One Night, which is uh, an upcoming horror film by What's Shannon Ford Chamley. I'm not really sure, but uh, that just came about earlier. Uh, she runs uh, Film Festival Atlanta. We met her. And uh, it'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. We'll have more information in the coming weeks. Here. Indeed. So, what are we doing? A two for? We're gonna have a snack. Yeah. So I've got a uh, I've got a five minute video here to play. Awesome. Um, this is a uh, <clears throat> this is a uh, as heard from a very old interview. So this is a clip from a very old interview with Carl Thibault, who played the Wolfman. In Monster Squad, Wolfman's got nards. This is not a guy who's done a lot of interviews. So I went back to an old interview found, and I got a cool little clip. I'm going to start doing this, uh, try to do this weekly on the show, play an old clip from way back in the archives. And then you can go back, you can go and find the whole interview on Without Your Head. Mm. So here we go. There's no video to this because this was pre video, but I got a, I've got a picture. So check it out and we'll be back here momentarily. The Wolfman, I mean, I was fortunate enough, nothing was glued on me. You know, it was a helmet piece that I put on with servos, and I had all the servos were in my back. That's why it looks like he's got this big, huge back. I mean, mm -hmm. all the servos were stuck in my back, and uh, it was kind of freaky. I got a great story about the, the uh, about getting that part, if you got a minute. Oh, definitely. It's, well, um, when I got cast to do that thing, you know, they got to do a full body cast of you from head to toe, and... Uh, you know, it's one of those things I asked them, I mean, they asked me, are you claustrophobic? And I said, no, I don't think so. And you don't know until they start putting you into it. You know? Right. And it was a four-hour process to wrap you like you got a broken leg. It's the same plaster cast when you, they wrap you head to toe. And I got to the top, man, and I started getting kind of a little weird, you know. <laughs> and uh, I was really committed to do this part, you know, and I just I hung in there. when they, they split the cast down the center after and literally almost fell to the ground because my body had like falling asleep, you know. Well, the night before the shoot, after they made all, they had, I, I'd gone back later and they did another head cast for the for the, for the head piece, and the it was like two days before the shoot. I remember them calling me up there, and it was going to be the first time that I was going to put the helmet piece on, you know, for the fitting. And mm -hmm. this thing is completely fit to my head. It won't fit nobody else's head. It's it fits like a glove to my head. Well, I put it on, and I freaked out. I remember this movie when I was a kid. And then nobody to this day has told me what the movie is. This is a movie where a guy puts on a mask and all of a sudden it starts getting tighter and tighter and it just crushes his head. Hmm. Oh, yep, yeah, that was in, um, it was a Vincent Price movie, I think. I yes, think it yes, yes. Might have been the second Dr. Fives. Yeah, he puts and the mask on and it mask. just starts crushing his head, right? It, it's like a frog mask, right? Right. And, and <laughs> that's the, the, it. Yep, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, that's and the first I, I'm Dr. Fives movie. <laughs> I put this... I put the Wolfman head, you know, the headpiece on my head, and that's the first thing that came to my mind, and I freaked out. I pulled it off, and I said, there's something in there. And, you know, and they, the, the guys, they looked inside, and they're putting their hands in there, and they went, no, no, it's okay. I was freaking out. I was like going, man, I'm either going to, you know, because I can't get anybody else. And I was like, oh, no, they're going to, this is just a mess. <laughs> I right. can't wear this thing, you know. I was like, I had to like calm down, and I had to tell myself, you know something, I want to do this part so bad. I'm gonna fucking. I'm sorry. No, you can say anything you want here. I'm gonna die in this thing <laughs> if I have to because I want to do this, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and the ironic thing was, late I put it on and I you know, and I worked my way through it, and then later when I was on the set, they would come over to me and they'd ask me if I want to take it off, and I I didn't want it off after because I was more comfortable in it later because nobody knew who I was. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of an ironic thing. I you know I, I didn't want it on at first, and then later on I didn't want it off. <laughs> so. Um, they mentioned that uh, Dracula and uh, Frankenstein that they they left the the makeup on all the time in front of the kids. They didn't want to 
they didn't want them to see him out of it. Right. Uh, were you the same way? I stayed in it most of the time, um, you know, just because, for my own reasons. I don't know if they, you know, they, they always pulled me aside anyway. So I had like two guys guiding me around. I was literally blind in that thing. The, uh, the eyes are actually much wider than human beings' eyes. Mm -hmm. And those are glass eyes in there that are run by servos. And my eyes, I mean, I was looking at the bridge, through the bridge of the nose with two tiny little slots. And then there was hair all over it. So it was the, the visibility was like you know maybe five percent, and so they all you know I always had two guys guiding me around everywhere I went you know mm -hmm. and, uh, after I was done pretty much they took me took me off to the side. And, uh, wow, yeah. it was pretty it was pretty tough then. I mean, uh, you know that scene in the, the phone booth was uh, was a pretty um, that was a one shot one take deal. It was candy glass. It was four in the morning when you transform. And he, yeah, and and it was the busting out of the telephone booth. And, yeah. And Peter Hines was directing that uh, second unit, and I remember, you know, and, and I had to take um, hot coffee, drink it, hold it in my mouth because that's what gave me the steam when I howled at the moon. Mm -hmm. oh. And uh, so I'm I'm bent over. This is a, a good friend of mine who was an actor was there with me, and and they were like, they, they, they just wanted to go home that night for some reason or whatever, and and I was like. And he says, okay, you're going to come. And just prior to that, I tripped over some crates they had because somebody put some crates there. I literally fell over. I could have really, you know, gotten hurt really bad. And they moved the crates. And and I don't think they realized how blind I was in this thing. I think they took it for granted I could see really well, which right. I couldn't. And uh, I was going to do this thing. And I had to be bent over. I had to, I had to bust the glass out. Um, I had to step outside, hit my mark, howl at the... You know, at the moon, holding that coffee and the perfect moment so you could see the steam, turn around and run around the gas pumps and up the road. And I was telling my buddy, I, I'm going to mess this thing up so bad. And he goes, oh, man. He walked me through it and he hit my marks. And I remember just before they, you know, called action, I said, I'm either going to nail this thing or it's going to be a mess. <laughs> and, and if, you know, if you break the candy glass, that's like a five hour de deal to, to reset it all again. They said, you know, if I, it was a one thing deal. If we didn't do it, we're going to have to come back the next night and try it again. And the whole thing came off perfect. I mean, just nailed it right on the money. Um, everybody was clapping after it was a really good night. <laughs> ah, and we are back here once again. It without here we are. Out. What a great movie. <clears throat> Yes, yeah. one of my favorites. That's another mm -hmm. one. Actually, when it first came out, was was a failure, and the director like says that kind of killed his career. And um, I think now it's like a beloved movie. I mean, I wonder if it was because like we were children with no buying power. So right, I'm wondering. Right. If... I saw it at the theater, but you know, it's like... I don't know. Maybe I don't know. But we couldn't go out and buy tickets or anything like that. Right, right. Yeah. That's, now yeah, that's we just have an excerpt the from power. The exactly. Yeah, that's from like 2007 or something. It's pretty old. Mm -hmm. It's so, awesome. That inter that full interview is also. I'm sorry. It was. Uh, it's also a special edition on the Monster Squad Blu-ray uh, German release. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Neil. Mm -hmm. Did you know that I'm supposed to be doing this interview for Women in Horror by a written interview, mm -hmm. and I'm not doing good getting it done? No. What do you so want me I'm to do? I'm seeing it now a little bit. live with my audience, friends, with my Neil friend, that I have to be responsible, get my shit together. And prioritize because I've got most of it done, but I don't want to. I don't want to lose out and be all ADHD dumbass and be like, oh, and think I've got more time than I do. So that's very cool. I'm very excited about that. Yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah I'm feeling do pretty it good up. about it, and uh, I'm it's very happy. I'm very happy that Women in Horror is shifting to March. I, that makes me feel. I good. agree. agree. Yeah, I don't know if I would have responded if they had not. I'd say I would not have because that really, you know, that really bothered me. To... Yeah. So uh, that one interview that's coming up, uh, 
the last night. I, I'm sorry, one night. That one is going to be yeah. one of our women in horror interviews because it's a woman uh, directed film, mm-hmm. woman produced film, female produced mm-hmm. film. And that's uh, Shannon uh, Ford Chamley, who's got the, um, she's got a uh, convention coming up. We met her in Atlanta. Ah, uh, yes. She's doing her own Very convention. So hopefully, we're going to be out there for that. She's excited. Yeah. To do I got to start us, so. planning my, uh, oh, I don't want to bookmark that. Get out of there. Um, yeah, we got to start looking at our year, and so I could start placing my, uh, yeah, my time off time. I have my supervisor because I was like, work sucks, and I want to kill everybody. She's like, do you have any time PTO coming up? Yeah, so I got to wisely look at that. <laughs> it's madness over there. Yeah, so we got to figure yes. that out. I got to get, I looked at it and the next thing I have off isn't until September and that's too far away. So what do mm. we got going for us, Neil? What's our what's our plan? Because we want to share it with the world too so they can tune in, pay attention to our live coverage of whatever it is. Yeah, so next you know? Saturday is uh, is the uh, American Horror Story. And surely we'll, we will communicate with y'all at yeah. some point during that day. Imaginary also okay. opens that weekend, so maybe we can try to oh. see both. That would be a fun uh, thing. Um, for events, I know actually a Boston Underground Film Festival is coming up. Tickets oh, yeah, that's usually that. March. Yeah, Deal. so yes. um, I haven't heard, I don't know, but hopefully, we will be uh, press at that. Oh. We have been, you know, for formerly, so hopefully, will they are. give us money for a hotel? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, we could go in and out of the city every day, but yeah, we'll f- we'll figure it out. Um, yeah, we will if, figure it out. We'll either do a day or maybe two, or yeah, we can we'll... get some shitty hotel like we have been the past few times. Yeah, can. the one year I went, I, I don't want to say the name of it because it's a super nice place, and for some reason it was way cheaper than hotels. But maybe that was pre-pandemic, so I don't know if it is. Oh, or... the place it we was... were talking about the other day. That's no, be no, this again. was this was a bed and breakfast. Oh, that was awesome. But I don't think bed and breakfast usually have two beds. I think it's basically the one bed. Yeah, so it could be. I could be uh, also. I, I I didn't go the last couple of years because it it was no longer very uh, uh, affordable. But for some reason, pre pandemic was super affordable, and then things uh, switched. But yeah, sometimes those are awesome. I've got uh. My regular, and I can never tell anybody the secret of this woman because I found this older woman. She has a beautiful house, like right at the edge of Providence that I've gone to for like four years in a row. Mm. Every Lovecraft event, I've gone there. That's my secret gem. We the good thing about about Buffett is an area that's pretty easy to get to, so we don't necessarily have to stay in uh, King, you know, yes. Cambridge and stuff. So that is Marchish. Do they not have a date out? March is coming real fast, like tomorrow. <laughs> See yeah. Boston Underground Film Festival. To March twenty second. No, that's twenty twenty three. That is not this year. Hmm. Just says details coming soon. You can buy the bat. You think you you think you would have like. Yeah, for March. March 20th to 24th, so it's not that far. Huh. When is it? March 20th to the 24th. Oh, yeah, we got to figure that out. Yeah. So the buff is cool because it's not just horror. It's like, it listed dark comedy, genre, bleak sci-fi, cerebral and or psychedelic horror, strange documentary, Fantastic music video, mature animation, and or films that defy description, preferably with a WTF from all over the world. So, yeah. They've got, I've got one of my favorite uh, festival shirts from them with the bunny. Yeah, we had a great Death time last Friday, time. We awesome ended up going two days. Nightmare horse. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll do that. That's a thing. And then, yeah. uh, all right. Yeah, we'll we'll figure. We got, I'm not sure what else is coming. Back at up, Brooklyn but... Horror Film Festival because that was yeah, great. That was I an awesome that. Time. that hotel. Yeah, that's why I wear this hat all the time. So skanky and nasty. Oh my goodness! 
Yeah, it was even worse than the last one we were at. Oh, that one was way worse than the last, the one from the other day. That room was hot, but. Yeah, but it was actually, it was fine. It was, it was big and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It was, it was fine. But the one in Brooklyn, well, it wasn't in Brooklyn. It was near Brooklyn. It was actually in New Jersey, but yeah. It was near it. And uh, like the door had a gap, like between the door and the door. And the gap. And if you really look, you could totally see through it. The, and it was sketchy and gross. And then the bathroom, there's a window where the shower is. And it was a good size window. And the water pressure was fucking amazing. But the, the like, um, it had like a, like a window frame around the window that was made out of untreated wood. And it was just like rot. <laughs> It was so fucking gross, but we're fine. Yeah, yeah. I I missed this. I'm sorry during the interview, but uh, Julie Hapney, uh, FX makeup artist, uh, said I had an amazing pleasure of getting to do Naomi's makeup for a music oh. video for the band uh, Vil Vile a Sin. She was so mm. cool. To be honest, she might not even remember me so much since I only worked with her for one day, but she is rad as fuck. Like, too cool for school. The cat's meow. <laughs> All that. Nice. Like I said, it was a pleasure to get to work with her. And you guys will have an amazing time. Awesome. Yeah, Julie's great. That's amazing. We'll have to get Julie back on. If she's yeah. Ready. Robert is saying good night. He may already be gone. All right. But, Thank uh, you, guys. We'll talk yeah. to you next week, Robert. Hopefully, you're a good man. Uh, yeah. My buddy Andrew uh, should be. Well, he was going to say he was going to watch. So, hopefully, he's watching Andrew. He's a good dude. Who's talking to us about the good time of buff 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 is a fun time says a mysterious uh facebook user let me see if i can oh you that. don't know who this mysterious facebook user is uh i have to have the facebook uh thing uh-huh. up. i'll just go grab see. it oh my goodness billy coin billy coin oh billy yeah how did billy 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 jumping around yeah he was uh he did we did see him just as himself yeah, earlier. With his shiny, happy face and everything. Yes. Shiny, happy Billy having fun. Shiny, what happy. is this? We got anything else going on before I start to review whatever news I find? Yeah, yeah, I got, I got. Hey, what's up? Let me grab some stuff here. I got some pictures. I tried to uh, come prepared tonight. So, uh, mm. former guest on the show. Issa Lopez is returning to season five of True Detective. I'm very excited. Ooh. I, I, I have to watch season show. four. Yeah, I have I'm to see season. this. I finally saw season one. Mm-hmm. Fucking loved it. I told you for years. It's so good. I know. But I don't really like... Uh, what's his name? Or no, he's fine. He was Woody really Harrelson? Like yeah, I don't like Woody Harrelson. Really? I don't know why. I, never, I'm a big fan of Woody Harrelson. And I thought he's really I thought like he's really good in that show because he doesn't have he doesn't have the more like the bigger role on like he's in it a lot, but he doesn't have the more showy role. And I thought he did a really good job with it. Yes. He but he was also very unlikable. Yeah, he was a horrible person. Skip season two. I will Thanks. because I already put it on for about two seconds. I was like, I am not doing it's not this. good. But no. season three, not I will good. say not quite season one, but very good, very good show, very good. I think I really love season three actually. So I what about season that. four? Season four, I haven't watched yet. That's uh, mm-hmm. Issa Lopez's. Uh, I think it just ended, so I'll be able to uh, binge watch it. Nice. And uh, I was really happy, like because like I said, she's on the show. I loved mm-hmm. her movie, Tiger's Not Afraid. Met her at Buff, and it's really cool to see her doing something, you know, a uh, big thing. So, yeah, very talented, and so cool. She's a cool person. Very, good. Um, very nice. What else see here? I got some stuff. Um, this is coming up soon. We saw the we saw the trailer for it, Late Night with the Devil. I thought it looked pretty cool. Who is the main dude? He looks um, from here like uh, Hannibal. No, it's a guy. Um, you you you've never not not the first Suicide Squad. That movie sucks. The second Suicide Squad is fantastic. 
And yeah. he plays Polka Dot Man, which going in, I was like, who the fuck is Polka Dot Man? <laughs> and uh, he's fantastic as Polka Dot Man. Right. And really well written. They took a silly character, gave it some seriousness to it. Also embraced the silliness of it. Anyway, the second Suicide Squad movie is uh, one of my favorite superhero movies. That is on the bottom of the shelf of things I need to watch. Yeah, it's, it's, I got so many it's things to watch. Lo- it's it's like a Lovecraft superhero movie. It's bizarre, but it's great. It is. Yeah. I'm telling you. Why would it be a Lovecraft superhero movie? Because of the villains in it. It's a cosmic horror movie. Hmm. The people. I will still have it at the bottom of my shelf. <laughs> I, there's just so other many I movies. There's so many movies. I can't. I, I can't. I can't watch them all. I can't. I can't do it. Neil, I just wrote you today about my time crunching. I, I gotta know. prioritize, man. I know, I'm just saying, it's cool. I can't make me time for the Suicide Squad shit. Troy finally Maybe. saw it. I told him to watch it for years, and he wouldn't watch it because he hated the uh, the first one. He doesn't like this. DC. Then he finally watched it, and he's like, oh, yeah, it was great. I was like, I told you. I think I saw this. This was an independent thing? People's Joker? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so when um we had uh, Christian on the show um, from um, All Neighbors Must Be Destroyed, Destroy All Neighbors, and mm-hmm. he talked about this movie because it had – it had like lawsuits against it coming out because you know they they do use yeah. like characters, but it's actually being released and it's playing at um Alamo Draft House. Really? Coming Maybe up. I didn't uh, see this. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. I think I'm thinking of another fan ish thing. So yeah. Looks cool. So, I've heard yeah. the good things about it. Uh, our friends at Arrow added Ooh. a bunch of stuff from uh, Coffin Joe, who I know of, but I've really never watched anything. Yeah. So I'd be curious to watch some Coffin Joe movies. I like that weird Bibby thing. There's some high yeah. heels all clearly of a dead person, a little flying eye. There's a lot going on in this image, in the mm-hmm. small yet creepy image. A baby. Baby. Yeah. Mm. Creep evil babies are always pretty creepy. So that that's uh that looks cool. And by the way, well, that other movie I mentioned, uh this one, it's also playing Alamo Draft House, and they're doing like a live QA. Like it's mm. I think it's somewhere else, but they're you know throwing it in there for people to uh, check out. I believe Billy over here is asking about the new Alamo. There are two Alamos, and Neil mm. didn't realize this. There's Seaport close to the aquarium, and then there's one. It was, uh, what was the theater that it used to be? There's too many. I can't. Yeah, I, used, I work like over Used to be the Caribbean. Fenway. Used to be the Fenway. <laughs> yeah, too. I am just putting up, though, yeah. that, pe- that see some people you may respect, Billy Coy, cool. David Dead Man, are saying Dude. Suicide Squad really good. If my option is to read a script to the movie I'm going to be involved in to help you with your own movie. All right. Oh, I understand. Show, I'm just saying it's That's interview all. on the weekends. That's all. I'm just saying. Well, and to try to do my own shit, like actual art things and writing things and my own things. I can't keep watching just movie. I can't. I can't. I can't. The Alamo on Seaport is the one we went to. And... It's good. The seats are weirdly worn, but it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. They're, they're comfortable. They don't sit back enough, but they're generally comfortable. They're like wherever. Uh, the table service was great. The theater itself, like the the screen, the sound was all great. It was good. Expensive, but it is what it is. It's certainly not more expensive than any other theater. And you get the refillable, endless popcorn. Yes. And you can get real butter on your popcorn. And that is quite good. Oh, the primevals. We uh we saw the primevals. Yeah, the primevals, oh, very fun know. movie. We have an interview for that too. Yeah. That man has made me angry though. Yeah, unfortunately. 
because of this AI bullshit. Mm -hmm. Son of a bitch. But Prime Evil is very cool that it happened. That's real. That's actually a. That's a awesome I thing. To, to, I get PTO. The only reason I can do things with Neil now is because I make reasonably average money. You, it's look, not like twelve dollars an hour. Like right squad's do. been out for years. You don't. It's not a. It's not a. It's. You can what? wait. You waited on. Uh, look. Down the road, someday you can watch it. It's not yeah, a. I don't it's mean not, this peer pressure, it's not guys. A priority. It's Come not on, a priority. do I not give enough to you? It's not a priority, but someday is all I'm saying. Man, that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying you got to do it this instant. That's how it uh, feels. So they posted. Uh, people are losing their minds because uh, these new, the first photos of the new crow are out. <laughs> What's that? Dave is being, and Dave is, you're being very sweet. I appreciate you. The first photos of the new crow, crow are out, and people are, are up um, in arms. Or see they, this. They want to they want to destroy the world. <laughs> They're very loyal. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest. I don't think it looks good. But yeah, well, we got I've also I've seen I've seen other things that didn't look good, and they end up being good. So who knows? But. Um, let me zoom blow. I'll try to save it. Ned, if you want. Yeah, yeah, it's got a weird, it's got nipple on. The, I don't, I mean, I don't, I mean, mm. I, I want to see a trailer before I say it looks terrible, like it, it's destroyed my childhood mm -hmm. and all this stuff. My, my it really does not fit suck. the comic. I've never, I mean, read like the you, comic, can, you can make know. criticisms of it based on the, the film with Brandon Lee, but. If you're going back to the loyalty towards the comic, it doesn't. The characters are different. No, this is like look at all the weird little red crop. No, I'm just not. No, yeah, I'm gonna crappy. wait and see a trailer for me. Um, sure. I don't know. I don't know anything about the characters, so I have no idea. But this is characters. Yeah. But oh, well, they they're saying this is this is the same character that that he played in the. Well. Whatever. I like the actor. He's a good actor. But that doesn't mean all actors. <clears throat> do. I've uh, lots of actors have been in. I mean, I love De Niro, but uh, he's been in movies I don't like. So fair. Yeah. But I'll say this: like Heath, the Heath Ledger Joker pictures came out. Everyone uh, this looks terrible. I, I love it. The last Batman <laughs> pictures came out. It's gonna be the worst Batman ever. Most people loved it. I loved it too. So, so who knows? <laughs> I'll wait and see it. The but. Just that picture alone, does that does that it interest me? No, it does not interest me. It looks so it's like uh the Joker movie. I was trying I to be this Joker. G Joker. No, the Joker with what's his face? The oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, punk. that that's the word that's a I mean punk in a positive way. He was in the uh that was in well he was in the Suicide Squad and what that was Suicide okay. Squad, the first ta the terrible Suicide Squad. Mm. <clears throat> See, yeah, by the way, when you watch me, you have to make sure you get the right one, not the one with Will Smith. Why? That one's terrible. Not because of Will Smith, but the movie's okay. terrible. Yeah, the Horrible. Jared Leto. I'm not a fan of Jared Leto. I've I've decided. I thought he kind of ruined um the sequel to uh Blade Runner. I thought he's really bad in that. Oh. Well, I'm not a fan of the man. Uh, hmm. He played the vampire superhero movie. That was horrendous. Vampire superhero movie. More. What's the name? Morbid or something? Morbius. Morbius. Yeah. Terrible. Oh. Uh, but I won't put all the blame on him for that one. That's just not a good movie. Mm. But uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Are you going to be pumped to see? Are we going to? We'll probably still review it though. I don't know. If maybe if there's nothing else playing, <laughs> the only movie I am out. not going to prioritize that shit. I did <sighs> notice. Uh, I don't want to just talk about Alamo Draft House, but I did notice that they um, they show a lot of uh, festival movies, which is cool. Movies that played festivals, so you know it's stuff that's well, not going to. I definitely anymore. don't want to prioritize that place. So, 
I was mean, playing Coolidge is my question. I looked up nothing interesting, a bunch of crap for what? midnight movies. What about for other day movies? Because sometimes the movies in the day are good. Yeah, there wasn't anything coming up to Coolidge. They've got 2024 Oscar nominated shorts animated. Yeah, I've seen them. They're good. They're sold that was a, out. That was a Maybe this is for today. Tomorrow <laughs> will be Friday. Oh, you don't want to see Dune Part 2, do you? Do you? No. I don't want to see that. No. No. You're not going to see it? No. You, you'd rather see this dopey I'd crow just, thing? Yeah, I'd rather go see that oh, than God. Dune 2. I'd rather, look, I'd rather see that, that crow movie might be so awful. I enjoy talking about it. Dune... I, this is my opinion. People, they're arguing the new Dune's great. People say, no, the David Lynch Dune is great. My opinion is there is no, there are no good Dune movies. They all are terrible. Every version of Dune stinks. Now, I've never wow. read the books. Maybe they're great. The movie versions are bad. The yeah. new ones are are incredibly boring. You can't say the new ones. You only the saw new one. one is incredibly boring, and I don't, I don't want to watch a sequel. And the David wow. Lynch movie's terrible. Damn. It's got a great cast, but the movie stinks. I like it, and I like the new one. So I guess I'm just gonna have to go into Boston to use my ticket all alone. Mm, like because I'm not going to pay for it when I'm paying for that freaking subscription every month. Well, I can't go this week anyway, but maybe I can't go. No, this I, I can't either. It's... I mean, I, if if we're forced, if you really, if you force me to watch it, I'll watch it. No, I can just go by myself. All right. You can go busy yourself elsewhere. I can't go Sunday. Well, I mean, maybe next week. Next week, no, next week we're going to be. See yeah. Naomi Grossman and uh to taint it with the Dune and the Big Bear movie, the Imaginary. Imaginary. When you really see Imaginary, dramatic, it was a great yeah. dramatic reading. We got to see Imaginary. Next, so tomorrow, the, thing with Dune, the Dune will be playing forever. So we, we could see it some other week if we have to. Dune. Oh my God. 2024 Oscar nominated shorts documentary tomorrow. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Billy. I don't want to just, I don't, I, I will do feel really bad if we never talk about, I'm I'm not saying you're intentionally doing anything. But no, but I mean, if there's, it's cool that there's some cool stuff playing anywhere. Right. You know? I, I would like to support any time someplace plays something an unusual weird horror movie independent film so, and they do yeah. show a lot of them which is cool yeah i just want to prioritize her yeah uh I by the way billy do it. us a favor billy let us know when there is something cool at one of those because you had mentioned to me at uh dead of winter if we went to see there was um i forget what movie you said and it had like the director there and stuff and and i didn't know about that was at um at the brattle so let us know oh. if, if you would not mind if there's something cool, yeah. horror or weird, you know what I'm saying? Probably yeah. something you'd be interested in because you're probably not going to tell us like a Sleepless in or Seattle is playing a midnight movie or something. That's a good movie. Yeah, I'm not against <laughs> it, but I'm we're not gonna I I'm, I'm not gonna go rush out and see Sleepless in Seattle playing midnight. No. When Harry Met Sally is also really good. Have you seen That's it? All right. It was a good movie. I'll have what she's having. That no, it's, it's a fun 80s rom-com romp. I like Breakfast Club. Eh. What? Breakfast Club's way better than when Harry met Sally. Well, when I think about Breakfast Club, I immediately think about Better Off Don't Dead. you forget Breakfast about me. Is, I'm not saying it's a bad don't, movie, but don't, I go don't to you. Better Off Dead and I find it to be a far more entertaining better off that's a good movie too it's amazing that is like i i'm gonna hold my we're gonna go see it and i'm gonna hold my boom box over my head the whole and people behind us will be pissed i guess but that's not that that's say anything but oh, i like yeah. all those movies that that's like guilty pleasure movies for me i like the coming of age 80s um, can't believe you mistaking those two movies they're good both of them there's claymation I want my two better off dead. yes it was so great 
They should play that at the freaking Coolidge. Yeah, those are good. I like them. Midnight movie, 80s bullshit. Yes. I miss they they don't play as much of the, the crazy stuff that they used to. No, I don't know uh, if that's because he has a baby now and needs to be respectable. We need to smack him around a little bit. Because it, it used to be all madness and like the most on like Maniac, original Maniac played yeah. cool after midnight. There's a lot of really dark grimy horror that played at Coolidge. I don't yeah, know coming up, really see, now, I to me, this isn't even an old movie, but then I see it's actually 2002, so it is over 20 years old, but Resident mm-hmm. Evil, I don't care. That's the Mortal stuff. Kombat movie, Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> How old is that? That's just like a year ago. Oh, Predator plays tomorrow with the Oh, battle. it must be all video game. I see it's all video game movies. Street oh, Fighter. Original Predator tomorrow at Brattle. I do like the Predator. Uh, Predators, uh, that's one of my favorites. I think Predator is great. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Gender bending, not gender bending, a genre bender bending movie. Great movie, Predator. I was blocked by a, a friend of mine on Facebook over Predator. Why they got into a big argument because I said it was a horror movie, and like it's not, it's science fiction action. And I'm like, this, I mean, yeah, it could be sure. all this and he like yeah. legit got pissed, like Do actually mad. Huh? He Do was I... a long he was actually a long time listener of the show. This was years Do... ago. Do he I know blocked him? me? He bl- probably I don't remember his name now, but he blocked me over it. Dang, couldn't have been that memorable. You don't remember his name. Shit. I'm bad with names, but it. I rem, I always remember this. He was pissed, and I was like, "Well, I mean, it's about a monster that picks people off one at a time and kills them like viciously." Mm. It's like, ah. but look, a movie can be sci-fi and action and horror. It doesn't yes. have to be just one. Like Alien. Yes, I would. I would <laughs> argue there's a lot of them. I would argue Aliens more horror than sci-fi. I mean, you can you can argue. Well, the aliens. What would you aliens say? Aliens is is definitely more action. Yeah. Muppet movie plays the Brattle on April fourteenth. I, like I like Muppets. I remember Super Jim Mario. was asking if we were going to go see the Muppets, and we didn't. Muppet Treasure Island with Tim Curry plays on the fifteenth. Dark Crystal hmm. on the fifteenth. What's going on? Dark Crystal is great. I gotta do that. I missed out last time. Yeah, we're a big fan Halloween of the midnight screens. I have to say, playing. I'm not, I'm not a fan of this month's uh, film selection of uh, of uh, video game movies. But I know but it's far away. It. Yeah, it's far away. But the Brattle is going to be playing, starting opening on April 28th, season of the witch, the original Halloween, Halloween two. There's going to be a block. It's pretty cool. I would see that. That'd be sweet. The first yeah. three. They're showing them in that order, though. I would think probably not, but well, hmm, 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 hmm. I'm not sure. I would go see those. It's a triple feature with Halloween one and two, and yet it says that Halloween two opens the 29th, and the other two open the 28th. At any rate, there's a lot of shit out there. There's Somerville Theater. There's these two theaters. That's just in the Boston area. There's Kendall. There's all kinds of shit. So go support your local theaters. They We, we want them around because you're going to, if you don't go, I have one that was local. John you know? Hughes all the way. I love Rob Reiner. No Rob Reiner for you. I like where I like him as as a meathead and all in the family. It's all you like that's ever made. No, he's making movies. He, I mean, he's freaking he did, Um, he's in um, yeah, he's making good movies. But <laughs> John Hughes, hard to beat. Mm-hmm. I'd rather watch the John Hughes uh like teen movies than the Rob Reiner uh. Who made uh, Better Off Dead? That's huge. I'm going to find out. Is it? Hmm. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I've never yeah. been to this one, uh, Billy. The Melden, the Menden, Menden, I don't know how to say Menden Drive In has some pretty awesome double features. Oh, yeah. Good to know. Savage Steve Holland is the director and writer of Better Off Dead. Okay. So it's neither. Yeah. John Hughes is like 16 candles, pretty in pink. Yeah. They're all great. The, the best 80s uh, teen movie ever made, Breakfast Club. Oh, this guy did One Crazy Summer. Yeah, that makes sense. That's the one where they slap the girls on the back and their faces freeze. Now, I'm not familiar with that movie, honestly. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It's fun. I'm going to do like an eight. Can we do an 80s rom-com month? On Without Your Head? On Without Your Head? Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sure. I did actually, th- uh, that's just a joke, but I did actually try to put together once a sword and sorcery month. I know it's not horror, oh. but. Yeah, but it's cool. in the realm. Yeah. I really yeah. like the, the late 70s, 80s ones. They Because they were like, I'm not a big fan of the 90s, like super campy stuff. Like, um, oh, the, the TV shows there. It was like, uh, like Hercules, yeah, Hercules. You know? was the, yeah, that stuff's not good to me. But like Excalibur, oh, the original yeah. Conan the Barbarian, too. Sword and the Sorcerer. Uh, that's just fantastic. Yeah, agree. But anyway, so, I tried to put that together, but it didn't work out. Ah yeah, well, maybe now that you're a, a big deal, I'm a big deal. You are a big deal. See. Death Stalker, yes, Billy. Death Stalker, that'd be sweet. That's a good movie. Death Stalker Two is Death not necessarily Stalker a good 2. movie, but uh, but it's pretty awesome. The makers of The Void told me about that. They're like, this is the best movie ever. It's pretty. It's pretty. Awesome. I will find it's, it, and I. It's did. an awesomely it bad movie. Fantastic. Who is um? Matilda oh, the what's her in name? It? The wrestler, the woman wrestler in it. Matilda the Hun. Yes. Who awesome. sadly passed away last year oh really that's too bad yeah i talked to her. she was going to come on the show at some, but anyway uh yeah it's very sad she uh was in bad health for the last few years mm. um but yeah that's a that's a fun movie i like it even yeah. the bad ones from the 80s that were fun like crawl crawl or whatever, crawl yeah what about lady hawk lady uh, beast master i would also put willow in there Willow, I you know, Willow's a genuinely good. I I never saw the the what was it the series they made. It seemed like everyone no. universally hated it. So really, yeah. Mm. I don't know if I <laughs> Warwick Davis did one. watch one or if I blanked it out of my mind. But the original movie is amazing. I love it. In my opinion, I think it's great. Hmm, what's going on, Fangory? Fangory, I'm not sure. Really sure how I'm feeling about your news today. You know yeah. what? You know what? Some news today, right now. Why does someone call me at almost eleven? It's an emergency. I don't, I don't know who it is though. It's just that I'm not going to answer that. Maybe it's just spam, man. Probably. But usually it says like uh, spam. But um, it is today is Ken Faree's birthday. Happy birthday to Ken Faree! Happy birthday, Ken Faree! We're a huge cool. fan. Cool. Ken really Faree's great. He's got a great Facebook page. Yeah. I don't know if he has the other pages, but he just seems like such a lovely man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have to. Jason gave me the blessing to do that. Mm-hmm. Someone offered to buy these this cock cage kit. Poor Ken Faree. This is the follow up. <laughs> <laughs> what is Neil thinking about? It just was here underneath my phone when I moved my. Yeah. Phone. Okay, Neil's. Talking about Ken Free, then pulls out the freaking cock cage. Well, Ken Free has a uh, uh, guys and fries autograph photos. So now the truth comes out about Neil's affections for Ken Free. He's pretty cool. Not he? he gives him a basically nude picture of himself, and then is talking about cock cages. Neil, I mean, so, Ken Free is like a—he's a nice guy. He's, yeah, a, he's cool. a good-looking fellow, so I don't yeah. blame you. He's a good catch. Yeah, I, I spent—I spent an hour with him in his hotel at a uh, at a uh, at the final um, the final uh, Rock and Shock. 
for this poor man. It's a good time. And then afterwards, I was like, oh, I got to get my... He's like, oh, you brought a video camera and a, and a tripod? I was like, yeah. He's like, why didn't you set it up? In the email, he said just audio. And afterwards, he's like, ah, we could have done video. But anyway, it was a, that's a great interview. You should check that out if anyone's not listened to that. Hardly any talk about Dawn of the Dead. And we talked about stuff that he doesn't normally talk about. And he had a great time. It was really good. It was very cool. We were going to talk like 10 minutes, honestly, because we set up before. And it went over an hour. And I was like, I had to remind him. I was like, you're supposed to be at Rock and Shock in like a minute. So, <laughs> But you know what? They waited remind. for him. Yeah, yeah. Really uh, yeah. great guy. I'm a big fan. Oh, he's really nice. I'm a fan of him as an actor and a person. Yeah, he seems like a really great guy. Mm -hmm. Like legitimately great guy. What is this Panic Fest thing? Panic Fest. Oh, that's yeah. uh, that was the Anthony Cousins actually saw our movie there last year. But um, is a new one coming up? It appears to be. Let's see. I like saw the something about it, I believe, on Fangoria. Hmm. April. April. Because I saw that Nightmare is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. And um, it will be attended by Heather Langenkamp. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, they were, oh, we should try to get someone. From and director. Oh, and Eduardo Sanchez and uh, co-star Michael Williams with the 25th anniversary of Blair Witch. Oh, wow. Yeah. I tried to get the the other. I've never. Uh, we we've had uh we've had um one guy in a couple. Boy, the cool the shirts are cool at Panic Fest. Well, that's it. We're going to Panic Fest for them shirts. Let me show you. Where is it? Where we don't even. Where is this located? I'll look here in a second. But look at these shirts. You got a Hold picture to share? Yeah. The cover is awesome. Oh, sweet! They are good shirts. We got like Brent the cat. The hell got two different that? cats, melting cats. <laughs> oh, I recognize that white haired man. No, oh, yeah. that one right there. Mm -hmm. oh, Jill Six. Oh, I think actually she might be in Kansas too. City now. Really? Since uh, she's there. Not that she couldn't travel, but. Hmm. She's bound to Kansas City. Yes. For yes. They, they have a spell around her that she can never leave. Who was that blonde guy? Was that a that was um spider dude? Yep. Huh. I, What's he up to? I wonder. I don't know. I I uh, hung out with him once. And it's not know, trying to be a hat. poor dude. And I didn't know who he was. Now I'm not saying that I, I'm just because I'm stupid, but he was a really cool guy. <laughs> Why am I not seeing anything? Look at that. That thing's rad. Yeah. Well, Panic Panic yeah, we got to wow, really uh, rifle through the things. Oh, look. Barbara Crampton. Oh. This is creepy. That, that girl over there. Not these people. The previous picture. Let's get some blood. Anyway, it looks like a good yeah, time. Kansas Panic City. Fest. Kansas City, indeed. Oh, there's our buddy there, too. Oh, yeah. Nice. All right. So this is a festival with good graphics, you know. So that was a comfortable <laughs> chair. Yeah, I know. The chairs look really nice. Chairs, T-shirts. Yeah, melting oh, it. Yeah, <laughs> we're all about it. Yeah, we gotta take a look. So, anyways, we we've said this a few times. We gotta take a look at the schedule for the year. Um, and uh, can we talk about the funk? Loved him in From Beyond. Agreed. Ken Free yes. in From Beyond. Definite. When there's no more room in the cock cage. <laughs> John, you're here. <laughs> it must be almost time for me to leave. John he asked like me. My alarm I, clock. He actually felt bad about this, and he asked us if it's okay if he comes late. He can't be here earlier. I said yes. It's fine. We yeah, understand. of course you can. But we we doesn't yeah, mean we're not going to joke around with you. Yeah, 
I wish you could be here earlier, but if you can't, yeah. you can't. That's right. what it is. So yeah, our man Funk. Upcoming film, my directorial debut, Bill Wheaton, Billy Coyne. It's going to be good stuff. What's the matter? There were strawberries. I put strawberries. Oh, I, mean, I, just, I like... thought you were just giving a dirty look because I'm here. Eh. But I had frozen strawberries that I put in it, and some of them were not that great. Oh, I just like ate them. I should say top. feature directorial debut, I guess. Because uh, so our man Funk, tell the audience about our man Funk. Yeah, Bill Whedon uh, wrote this story uh, about uh, he's in it about a you know older gentleman trying to rid the the uh, city of uh, punks and a drug lord, and uh, it's gonna be pretty sweet. Billy Coyne is in it. Michael Epstein, myself, Annabelle Lecter is now involved. Where is this going to be filmed? New York. Ah, uh, ah, makes sense because he's a New York character. Yeah. Bill lives in New York. Right. Yeah. So there'll be, there'll be there's going to be a crowd funder coming up soon for hope hope people can uh, can fund this movie. There's trading cards, which I didn't I did not create the trading cards, but they're pretty cool looking. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. It'll be a fun time. I'm looking forward to why it. Why is he called? Why like our man Funk is a very catchy title, I will say. Why his last name isn't Funk in the movie, is it? Well, we should get Bill on sometime and we'll talk about it. Or is it my man Funk? Our man Funk. Man, Neil doesn't know anything about the movie he's gonna direct. That's bad. No, it's our man Funk. Uh, our <laughs> man Funk. Um yeah, we'll get Bill on sometime and we'll talk more about it. All right, that sounds good. Yeah. Bill wrote it. Co-wrote it. Co-wrote it. Who else time. wrote it? Um, I'm not positive. You ask him these questions. I don't know. We'll we'll get uh we'll get Bill on and we'll talk about it. What else we got going on over here? Well, that's um that's unfortunate about um, Richard. Richard who? Shit. The comedian. Oh, Richard Lewis. Yeah. Parkinson's, I guess. He, was, he wasn't a young man. No. But... I always, I always found him funny. I always liked him when he'd be guest on, uh, you know, he'd be like a regular guest on all the, the late night talk Herb. shows. It's weird oh. because I don't watch any late night talk shows. But uh, when I, growing up, like I, I watched all, you know, I, I never liked Leno, but I watched Letterman, watched mm -hmm. Conan, I'd watch um, um, Politically Incorrect Bill Maher. I, I even liked uh, Tom Snyder, I actually thought it was a good show. It was more, it was a drier <laughs> show. But anyway, uh, you know, he, he'd be a guest on, on different shows. He had a sitcom um, when I was in high school with um he did? Oh, well, you know, yeah with a uh, woman from uh Hall from halloween um, jamie lee curtis oh well anything but love it was a good show hmm. let's, send you, good let's send you a picture from this gross thing it's well i don't know if the thing is gross but the picture of this creature the creature is super disgusting and then you know most recently was on um i didn't Kirby realize you Studios. weren't done talking I was gonna say well, while I was upload was because I have to download stuff. Most recently it was on uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Done. Yeah, loved him in Men in Tights. Oh my god, that movie! <laughs> Dear goodness, I remember seeing that in the theater. Yes, oh I saw, I saw it. the TV glow. Watched the trailer for A24's new horror movie being called a one-of-a-kind masterpiece. This comes from Bloody Disgusting by John Squires, the man who will not accept my friend request. Um, so here we are, fresh off the haunting and singularly creepy indie. We're all going to the World's Fair. Do you know what that is? 
Um, I remember I came out of. Oh, it's I. I did not like it. I did not like it. Oh, I tried to. Well, watch, all right. uh, I heard a lot of a lot about it, but uh, I was not a fan. Hmm. Well, we'll see what happens. Jane Scheinbrunn is back with A24's I Saw the Glow, releasing only in theaters May 3rd. Headed to the SXFW Film Festival next month, I Saw the Glow first earned rave reviews out of Sundance, and several of them featured in the film's must-see official trailer. In a world where too many people seem to be following trends and doing what everyone else is doing, Jane Scheinburn, I'm going to say it repeatedly wrong, is undoubtedly a true original. That was clear from We're All Going to the World's Fair, and it's crystal clear watching the trailer for I Saw the TV Glow. Watch the eerily seductive trip. How many times can you say this, my friend? Ah, okay, I'm skipping this line because it's just a repeat. This is a fast type out. Megan Navarro wrote in her Sundance review for BD, I saw the TV glow offers a layered and authentic portrait of identity wrapped in 90s nostalgia and surreal imagery that embeds itself deep into your psyche. Megan continues, Schornbrunn delivers a singular vision of art house horror that entrances for its fever dream style and insanely cool imagery. A bunch of people will lead the cast. In A24's, blah, blah, Owen is just trying to make it through life in the suburbs when his classmate introduces him to a mysterious TV show, a vision of a supernatural world beneath their own. In the pale glow of the television, Owen's view of reality begins to crack. So there is, a, oh, there's a really nice poster. Um, and there's a trailer out there. So if someone wants to see if Neil wants to know if this looks as shitty as he thought the last one was. No, this know. looks cool. That monster is crazy, though, right? Yeah. It's gross. What? So that's that. Yeah. I, I oh. mean, I'm in just from that picture. Yeah, right? It's pretty It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, there's something here about Doug Bradley. Blip, blip, blip. For Thorn. This comes from... This is another bloody disgusting... Fangoria was a little light. Um, Alex De Vincenzo, whom I believe you know, right? I don't know. Maybe not. The name sounds familiar. Yeah, I thought you knew this name. Doug Bradley would love to play an older, darker pinhead in a Scarlet Gospels movie. Um, yeah, Demon to Summon Angel to Others, Doug Bradley achieved horror icon status for his portrayal of Pinhead in Clive Barker's Hellraiser and its first seven sequels. Although he hasn't reprised the role since 2005, the consummate actor wouldn't rule out a return. I cannot pretend in any way to do Doug Bradley's voice. I certainly say never. I've never said I was done with it. I never said I was retired from it. Hey, let me get a picture up there so you can flash it around for the for the studio audience. Give me a moment. It's really okay, weird though with the um Hellraiser. So they had the you know the eight, I think it was eight with um Doug Bradley, then they did the that one that was really bad. Then they did judgment. Uh, day or judgment, which I actually liked, but you know, then they have a whole new guy. Then there was no follow up to that, and then we have like the reboot, and then we have like a series coming up. And now, like the idea yeah. that that Doug Bradley would play Pinhead again, it's like three or four ongoing like Hellraisers. There's a lot going on in the the universe of Hellraiser. Let me continue with the thing now that we've got this picture. He continues. I'm sensible about these things, too. I was in my mid-30s when I first played the character, and I was just turning 50 when I played him the last time. I'm not in that age range anymore. I'm now in my 70th year. Good for you, Doug. And to some extent, I think special effects makeup is a younger man's game. Bradley's ideal circumstances for a return would be an adaptation of Barker's 2015 novel, the Scarlet Gospels, which concerns the end of Pinhead. Quote, if we did that, maybe we could present an older Pinhead to be aware of the fact that I am the age I am, that time and gravity does what time and gravity does. 
an older, darker pinhead would intrigue me, one not so much in love with the flippant one-liners and the witty comebacks and so forth. He notes that Scarlet Gospel's vision differs from that of Hellraiser. Quote, Christian theology was very much avoided in relation to the way that Hell was talked about in the first Hellraiser movies. Clive typically blew that wide open with the Scarlet Gospels. It's very theological on a cosmological scale. That would be the perfect bookend to my life in latex, if I can put it that way. He says before reiterating that there is no such thing in the works to his knowledge. Quote, I've never turned my back completely on the character, but realistically, I think that's probably that. And that's fine. I'm proud of what we did with the movies and I'm proud of my work in it. I'm cool with being where I am now. Pinhead was most recently portrayed by Jamie Clayton and Dave Bruckner's 2022 Hellraiser reboot, to which Bradley had a, quote, positive response, coupled with a slight disappointment, to be honest. That's not a judgment on her at all. He explains, I thought the design elements of the remake were really the star of the show. I loved what they'd done with the redesign of the box, that metal grid around the house. I had no idea why it was there, but it was certainly very cool. All of this stuff going on up in the ceiling, great. Bradley perked up when Clayton's pinhead came on the screen. Quote, I thought the redesign of the makeup was very cool. It was a bold thing to take on redesigning such an iconic makeup, and I thought they did a very good job with it. I love the change of palettes. I love the intestinal pinks and pale purples and so forth. Um, woo. Jamie is very slight. She's tiny across the shoulders. I was immediately intrigued by it and kind of sat up when Pithead first appears in Hellraiser. It's very in your face. In spite of the fact that I'm wearing a skirt, it's very macho. It's very masculine. It's here we are. We're Cenobites. We do this. We do that. Fuck with us and we'll tear your soul apart. It's very clear. And it, it just goes on about uh, his opinion of, of that movie. And that he can be seen next in Thorns, a Hellraiser-inspired movie that melds themes of religion and science with practical special effects. It opens in select theaters in Michigan, Missouri, Kansas, and California on February 23rd, an expansion aimed for later in the year, with an expansion aimed for later in the year. So that's opened. If you're in any of those states, near any of those states, uh, those have opened up. Yeah, yeah, I believe we're going to have the director on soon from Thorns, cool. too. I'm not sure what's happening there, but yeah, it'll be cool. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I love Doug Bradley. Has so much presence. Uh, yes. Amazing voice. Great actor. I actually like that idea of him playing, uh, you know, the showing like the demise of Pinhead. I've never uh, read the Scarlet uh, Letters. I, need, I should uh, check those out. I'm sure they're on uh, the, the Scarlet Gospel. I'm mm -hmm. sure it's on um, audiobook. It probably is. Uh, the remake was not good. The Cenobites were great. I don't really think they look great, honestly. Those were great changes, and it looked good, but the plot was just so cookie-cutter. Yeah, um, there was, like, yeah, so many like chase it. scenes I thought were not good. Like this, It didn't feel like Hellraiser to me, and people kept saying how close it was to the novel, which made no sense and because it... It, it didn't even have the the novels the not even about the Cenobites. The novels about Frank and 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 Julie Julia. So I don't know how is anything like the book. To be honest, the original movie is way closer to the to the book. So um, I don't even think it got like the themes from the book. Never mind, you know, mm -hmm. different characters. I didn't. Know, there was to me. There's something about the Cenobites that looked. They were too like smooth and um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say they looked bad, but I didn't really think they looked particularly great. Yeah. I felt with the Cenobites that they, they put too much into the, the contraptions that in the original Cenobites, it was very raw. These, these look like beings that were ripped up, they're integrated, but in a, I just think that the style was, it was very different. Um, it didn't, the ornate nature of these new creations, it was just, I didn't find it appealing. I thought it was too busy. I thought it really distracted from the overall like vibe where you'd be so caught up in like looking at this intricate design. I feel like that it was unhelpful. I think that the original characters, they were 
had enough personality combined with their costuming. I don't know. They, I feel like they just had a, a a better presence. I I think that these things were were like uh, some person wanted to show off their their skills in design, and eh. um and the and the movie wasn't great. There was an amazing scene though when these two dinks, the the boy and the girl, the man and the woman, whatever these young people, they go to a, a nursing home where there's a woman there who has some experience with the box. I don't even remember the, the, what it is that well, but she has some experience. They go to interview her and talk with her and she is very scared. She, I think decides she doesn't want to talk to them and she is so great. She is the most real person in the entire movie. I really believe in what she's saying. I think the scene looks good. Then she's, you know, she's here in like in the space they leave and then all kinds of dark stuff starts happening. And it's genuinely horrific. The rest of the movie is not, it just seems like a prop for the, the visuals. It was very bland. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree hundred percent. I'd love to see indeed. Clive uh, being a traveling art show to the States. Um, Annabelle and I get to see um, some of Clive's, not a lot, but some of it at the Dark Arts show in uh, Texas. Fright Texas Frightmare, Frightmare, which was amazing. Yeah, it was absolutely amazing, and it would be incredible to see his stuff. Um, yeah, right, Dave. Exactly, and the same thing about androgynous pinhead. The Cenobites are these androgynous. They're they're angels, right? So. The, the yeah. reason they're androgynous in the uh, in the novel is because they're so ripped up that you can't see the what they are. Um, well, there's, I mean, like Pinhead has a beautiful face. I so, saw, pe yeah, I, I saw people say what Dave's saying is right, but I saw people say they got it right because they had a because it should be female, which isn't correct, but. But I, I agree with that, that they, they were more androgynous than, or Pinhead's more androgynous than the, uh, than the original. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Clive Barker, I really, uh, I love his art. It's like the the freaking original Cenobites. It's like, it's gritty. It's, there's a feeling to it. There's, there's you feel that it, there's some art to it. There's an intensity, uh, a rawness to it. Um. And it's just not there for the new ones. They're not as bad as like as part three CD disc face and you know the weird camera, the camera eye. eye. Yeah, that's, that's really bad. This is so bad. So bad. Yeah, I was surprised. I mean, I, it's cool. People loved it, but I was surprised that there was like a lot of like, like real like Please. yeah. Yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, but uh, I think it's, it's weird that, though, that there wasn't a follow up to it because there were people who really liked it. With those, I guess you have to think about it. Was on those Hulu. people might really like it, but are they going to pay to see another one? Yeah, well, they didn't pay for that one, it was on Hulu, so maybe, uh, yeah, they have to make some kind of money off of it. People have Hulu subscriptions, yeah, but I mean, most of these, well, yeah. A lot of these are losing a ton of money, so who knows? Yeah. Like so, a Peacock lost like billions a quarter or something. Wow. It's not looking good out there. Mm -hmm. Enjoy all these shows while you can because they're just going to run out of money. This is just, they're going to go bankrupt and. Any yeah, business no, that you're that, spending that much more in percentage than you're earning, you're losing money. That business dies. Yeah, well, I think everyone would assume that the streaming is the future, which it probably is, but at the same time, it's there's not enough. I mean, plus people were getting rid of cable because it was expensive. And then if there's a uh, hundred streaming sites and it comes, it ends up being more than what you pay for cable. I mean, that's not the yeah. answer either. Yeah. 
Um, and that's it. It's, it, I don't want to go to, but there's like, I, I know, like, for example, they paid billions for, for WWE on Peacock, and now Netflix paid billions for it on, uh, on Netflix. But, uh, how do you get all that back? Because you also you're also paying for all this other content on there, and Peacock for me is three dollars a month. Like, how many yeah. people would have to sign up to to get you know get get to make this affordable? I don't see it happening. Although I did hear that Disney just teamed up with some major company in India. And then I, next, I, that Netflix, because I, I went to cancel my Netflix. Mm-hmm. And then they offered me like a half price one that has ads on it. So I kept it for now. So hmm. um, I don't really care if it's got a couple ads, but, it did. but the idea to a lot of these streaming sites were, you know, you've paid a premium price and there'd be no ads, but now they're starting to finagle around that where you pay a better premium to have no ads and then pay mm-hmm. a little bit less to have ads. But there really isn't much on Netflix. I like, I actually got it because I want to see the oh, last. Yeah. Looks... Uh, I was catching up because I hadn't seen the previous season of uh, Stranger Things, so uh, I wanted. To oh, I'll watch. Where are they at now in Stranger Things? How many are there? There's one more coming up. The season yeah. five, the final one, I think. What season are they in there right now? I haven't watched all this new one because I wasn't really into it. But um, the one that's coming up will be the final season. Then, was the the newest one was the one with like the they monster? Yeah, I didn't watch it all, so don't don't spoil it for me. But the so the, the one it's they bring back the uh, the sheriff like right away, like he's not yeah. dead, even though I'm I I hate that kind of stuff. If you kill off a character, you shouldn't just bring him back. It, it takes away all importance of killing off main character. Yeah, he was very likable. Yeah, but they just don't kill him off. <laughs> you yeah. kill him off and immediately, oh, no, he's fine. I don't know. Yeah. It's pretty lame to me. There was something else I was about to say. Um, I forget now. I sent you a couple Clive Barker um, images to share with the crowd. For those, for those way, who was... somehow don't know, you should totally know. It was someone we know was trying to call me. Yeah. About someone... Uh, Good. I can't stay on the air because it's just between me and and you at the moment. But um, someone but it's who a wants positive involved, call. It's a positive call, yeah. Okay. I told them Thursdays are very bad. Busy, busy. Ah. So he understands. He understands. But anyway, he wants to talk to us about something in the near future. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. About a it's about a movie thing. I know we don't want to get you can't get involved too much stuff, but you can let me know. I'm pretty yeah. sure I know what you're talking about, but you do not have to talk about yeah. it anymore. All right. All right. Here we go. Look at that. I know it's not like a great quality, but I love that one. I love it. That's that. I've never so seen cool. this one before. Yeah. That's very creepy. Just a couple. Just so people get a taste. Yeah. I call a taste of Clyde. I'm very flattered that I've had people comment about my art that it's similar. It's certainly I not intentional. That, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Not intentional. But that's that's cool. Yeah, that's I think the Dave's thing. is as well. From the things I've seen from Dave, it's very um very Barker ish esque. That's the thing I um I kind of pick and choose. Like I actually watch a lot of stuff on Shutter, and then some things like uh, Disney Plus. I bought one for a month, and I watched like the shows I wanted to see, and then I just canceled it. And then mm-hmm. I was thinking I'll probably get it again sometime soon and watch all the other seasons I haven't watched yet, and all the other shows, and then cancel it again. Because <laughs> there's not stuff on there that I would watch all the time, really. So. Yeah. You're welcome, Dave. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Your stuff is really cool. The stuff that I'd seen, it was a long time ago, but I'm assuming that you're still doing the same stuff. Mm-hmm. But I have got... Oh, man. I've really been scratching the hell out of my neck. Um, I've got to go. Tomorrow, I have a dentist appointment. 
in the morning and I have to make sure I'm there bright and early because I am going to get clear aligners. I'm, I'm excited and anxious. But Neil doesn't give a shit. Yes, I do. It's cool you're getting uh, aligners for your teeth. (laughs) I know. I just be fine. I'm literally leaving in two seconds, and you're like, all right. So we'll be back next week with uh, with the Bambi horror folks. That'll be really cool. And Chad Farron, who directed uh, the old ones. Mm -hmm. So this that'll be a fun show. Got a lot of people coming up. Go uh, join the Facebook group if you're not already there. Uh, if you are there, wherever you're watching this, please give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. Once we hit 5,000, the next week I'm going to give out some stickers to people who share out the show. So share out the show. I'm going to start keeping track of that. And I'm going to keep your names on the list, and we'll give out some stuff once in a while if you help help spread the head. So subscribe on there. Hit the bell icon. Follow us on Twitch. And everywhere else, Instagram, yeah, Instagram, yeah, and the Instagram actually is pretty getting pretty uh active. So uh, follow us on Instagram. Um, I'm, we're on Twitter, but I don't really use it a lot, so I'd prefer Instagram, uh, YouTube, yeah. Twitch, and Facebook. Place. Yeah, Elon Musk is a turd. Yeah, and and Dave Deadman's our Instagram uh exclusive. He's exclusive to nice. Instagram. That's as far exciting. As media. I'd love to see your art. I'm not having been keeping up with art either, which is why I can't watch all the movies. But I love you guys for suggesting them, and uh, I'm I'm very happy for for people's enthusiasm about the movies. That's why we're here, right? Without your head is for movies. Exactly, exactly. So, so, uh, so David Rosen's gonna play us out. He was a great music of the month. Uh, yeah. Coming up, I think we're going to have someone from um, We Are Horror Records. They contacted us about having one of their artists on. Nice. They, they do a lot cool. of uh, cool, uh, a lot of punk horror, but a lot of, a lot of horror stuff uh, out of the UK. So we're looking forward to that. Awesome. And uh, if it. you would like to be on the show at some point in time with your music, reach out Submit to us with that, your head at gmail.com. If we can't get you as music of the month, we'll play it, you know, uh, you know, somehow on the show. All right, guys. Have a great night. This is Annabelle Lecter. This is Nasty Neil. And this was... Without. Your head. <laughs> 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 <laughs>